The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Thursday, February 25th, 2021, years after zero. This sports show with a lot of shit to talk about will begin right now. Shout out to Twine for that beat drop. I appreciate you, fella. I literally just got done with a uh, ad week thing. Whoa. 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 Keynote speaker. I was sitting right here. No, no, no. Actually, I was introduced as, let's take a break from the intelligence. <laughs> that is how it was. Good leading. It was. Let's get to some entertainment. I think I brought some, I think I brought some, uh, a little bit of knowledge though, you know, in, in creating an engaged fan base is what I was asked to speak about. It was a blast. Last time I was very thankful to Adweek, by the way. Thank you. Thank you, Adweek. Thank you, Adweek. Thank you Adweek. I have no idea how that's going to pan out. I had a blast. I was talking to people that I don't normally ever or have potentially never ever spoken to i assume there's a lot of suits uh, a lot of uh you know potential jake you turn this up over here real quick uh a lot of potential um i would assume given the old white guys yeah i would assume yeah. there's a lot of that was in there you know what i mean there was a lot going on but i'm very thankful for the opportunity to do that and i'm very thankful for all of you that are watching and listening wherever the hell you may be we got a great show for you today russell wilson's team is now putting out desired team locations if he was to be traded he said hey listen there's a couple places you can go jets saints dolphins raiders these are just off the top of our head some other places as well this is just like the deshaun watson camp that's putting out desired destinations the dolphins king uh, the dolphins camp has to be pumped that both Deshaun Watson and Russell Wilson are saying hey we'll go down to the 305 MIAO we will go see Rick Ross sling some things down there if we have to the interesting part about all of this with Deshaun Watson the Houston Texans Diana Rossini reported this morning are not answering phone calls don't want to hear it Deshaun Watson just put out a tweet that said loyalty is everything okay so I wonder who he's talking about probably Cal McNair with Russell Wilson though we have been told now that three first is a starting asking price now is that from the Seahawks is that from Russell's team that's trying to put the narrative out there that, yeah, the Seahawks are on board with this? What is it? Now there's reports coming out that Russell Wilson stormed out of a meeting Whoa. with coaches this past season? Whoa. Whoa. Not Russ. Not Russ. I will stop saying go Hawks. What? I will. Did? Are you serious, Russ? Uh, he did not, actually. We said that he did. That was actually debunked by a Seahawk fan who said, we are the worst show going because of the way we speak about the Seahawks. But what I'm telling you, Russell Wilson's team, Team 3, chef, landscaper, oh, yeah. body guru, mm -hmm. PR person, agent person, marketing person, I'd assume Sierra's part of yep. Team 3. Music oh, yeah. video coordinator. Music video Halloween costume coordinator. Team 3 now is getting very loud about, hey, we don't want this to happen. And I guess the signs, just like Tommy fucking Foxborough with New England, behind the scenes, it seems like the signs are now being released. After the Super Bowl, we saw Russell Wilson down at the Super Bowl alongside Roger Goodell. He uh, watched the game. He saw what was happening on the field, gives a call to his quarterback coach and then uh to also the seahawks personnel and says hey i want to talk about what we're going to do with this offensive line i want to i want to i just saw what the bucks and the chiefs got going on uh patrick Mahomes running for his goddamn life look a lot like what i was doing people are saying well the chiefs uh, we'll never be able to win without that offensive line. And I'm asked every single year basically to do it. Uh, I assume Russell had some questions. It is alleged that the Seahawks did not give him the answer that he either wanted, expected, or thought he deserved. So it feels like behind the scenes in Seattle, there's been some tension a brewing from one of the greatest football players to ever play football in the franchise that drafted him late and then watched him grow into one of the greatest football players of all time. This is eerily similar to Tom Brady's situation in New England. We all know that Tom ended up being a free agent. The free agent frenzy happened. If they're asking for three number ones, let's assume a lot of teams are going to be interested in Russell Wilson. And if Russell Wilson goes to your team, just like the Seattle Seahawks have been, you're immediately in contention no matter what the roster looks like. Now, DK Metcalf, 
absolute stud. Uh, Ty? Lockett. Lockett, Lock it, yeah. absolute stud. I'm not saying that you can just put him on a trash team and they're going to be good. They have good players over there. But if you put him on a team that's ready to go, maybe the Dolphins. Maybe he gets over there. Uh, to the, the Jets is an interesting one because that would just strictly be because you're in New York, I guess. I don't know. Dallas Cowboys are potentially in contention now because Sierra's from Texas and Jerry Jones might not be sold on uh, Dak Prescott yet because they are nowhere near a long-term deal. After, what, three years now I'm negotiating? Last year, the big deal was, well, it's four versus five years. Now we're one more year into this thing. They're nowhere close on a long-term deal. Does that mean Jerry Jones just doesn't like Dak Prescott? You have to ask that question at this point. But what if Russell Wilson is a quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys? Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Is Mike McCarthy going to ruin that? Mm, I don't know. You got Sledgehammer going to hit that watermelon, going to go do his thing. If he's quarterback for the Dolphins, are the Dolphins in contention? I think so. What if the Colts say, hey, Seattle, how about Carson Wentz in two ones? The Colts probably win the fucking Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Still might with Wentz. Huh? They still might with Wentz. At Tone Diggs is here. Boston <laughs> Connors here. Gumpy is here. Ty's still out. At Viva Lazito sitting down on the couch. Zito was the one that, by the way, uh, I was asked yesterday on a FanDuel podcast uh, if if I had to take one person to a deserted island alongside of me of the boys, who would I take? I canceled out everybody in a thoughtful manner. Mm -hmm. Diggs is very similar to me now at this point. We'd be looking for somebody else to do the fish and the hunt, and we're hanging out. Mm -hmm. Connor, yeah. <laughs> Can't do it. Gumpy. Now, there are some things about Gumpy. Yeah. He knows grit, right? He's been in the bottom of ships painting them 2, 3, 4, 5 a.m. in Canada. The most recent. A lot of the boys live in a posh life now. So if you are deserted, maybe the guy who was deserted in a boat yeah. for a long time is the guy to take. Weren't the choice, though. Jason McAfee and I, we would be able to survive. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sure. That would have been a little bit of boring. Foxy, no way. <laughs> Nick, no way. How about Chase Tapping, though? Keep that out of the island. <laughs> the answer was Zito, strictly because Zito can do everything. Zito had to basically, in this ad week thing I had to do, he had to build a background for me to be Jeez. in. He had to do the connection, oh, yeah. the oh, microphone. Yeah. Zito is a one-stop shop for everything. And right now, do we have a poll for the people to listen to? We do, yeah. Uh, is Russell Wilson going to be traded? Yes, 31%. No, 69%. Oh, See, wow. this is the thought that I have as well. Why would you trade? Listen, Deshaun Watson just followed me on Twitter, okay? So, whoa, hey, whoa. Shout out to Sean. Shout out to Sean. Shout, shout out to Sean. Shout out. Deshaun Watson, incredible football player. Hell yeah. In 2020, 2021, I'd assume 2022, 2023, 2024, what? 2025. What? All these years going forward for the foreseeable future in the NFL. Yes. You need a guy, okay? If you want to win a Super Bowl, you need a guy. If you're a team that has a guy and you're being forced almost to trade that person, it's going to be really hard to be like, yeah, we'll be able to find another guy because there's not a lot of guys on planet Earth. I don't, I don't, Trevor Lawrence might be a guy. Hey, he might be a guy, not her. Hopefully he's a guy. That'll be fun. Mac Jones, allegedly, might be a guy. Zach Wilson might be a guy. Okay, there's Justin Herbert is showing signs mm -hmm. he's going to be a guy. Joey Burrow, showing signs he's going to be a guy. But guess what? Only one or two of that, that whole crew I just said, going to be guys. That's just the way it goes. This is the elite of the elite. Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, their play on the field has showcased that they are one of those guys. If you're a team, you, what are you going to do? You're just going to be like, yeah, we're going to go back Baltimore Ravens style, get Trent Dilfer, win this thing with defense. That ain't going to work anymore. You need a guy. You got to know you're going to have a guy. Seattle and Houston are sitting in a prime position. Maybe Seattle... Much more open to trading Russell with the rumors of what's going on behind the scenes, face-to-face, -face, storming out of meetings, not being happy about shit, calling him from Roger Goodell's oh. suite at the Super Bowl. <laughs> I want answers on the offensive line. Well, I, I don't have answers for you right now. <laughs> Russ it says Pete Carroll, well, I need him now or whatever. I think that's much more likely than the Houston Texans moving on from Deshaun. But both of those seem like if you're a team, that is a massive mistake in the football world that we live in right now. For Seattle, it's a isn't it a pretty easy fix to make Russ happy? You know, you, you bend the knee, you let him talk, you take his advice and everything. Obviously, shot, he's already gone. But just get him a tackle. Like, is it that tough to do? Is it worth trading Russ versus just going out and getting an offensive lineman? No, and everybody's saying, well, they'll get three first-rounders. I've told you my thoughts on first-rounders. Mm -hmm. And maybe one day 
on this show, we should just read off a list of first rounders. Sure. Just Jeez. from the last 10 years. We'll just read off. A, not right now. We're not going to do this right now. I saw Diggs in the COVID Cowboy uh, hat tilt down to his computer. He <laughs> yeah. was about to right dive on. in there. But only the bangers survive. Okay, so only the biggest busts are talked about and only the biggest success stories are talked about. There are a plethora of guys that have had incredible college football careers, so much so that they got drafted in the first round and just completely fizzled out. That happens on a very, very, very regular basis. Now, if you're the Seattle Seahawks, have you drafted well? I guess you you really haven't if that's why you're in the problem with Russell Wilson. You have to bank on your scouting department, your general manager, taking advantage of those three first-round draft picks. The Detroit Lions, everybody said they won the trade. We'll see. Okay, now I have faith in Motor City Dan Campbell. Yeah. Okay, I got faith in what they're building up there, especially okay. if the uh, Sheila Ford Hamp or whatever's oh, yeah. in the meetings and everything like that. It's a big deal. She's been around football her whole life. Yeah. People forget. Yes, she's been around football her whole life. Cars in football. Are you fucking kidding me with her? <laughs> but it, if they if they fuck up the the draft on a regular basis, you can give them ten number ones. Yeah. And that's not going to change anything. It's just that for me, that whole talk about, well, they got a bunch of first rounders or second rounders. It's like, that's cool. And now you're just automatically assuming that the motherfucker making the decision for those picks is going to make a good one. Because one Russell Wilson, by the way, uh, is better than two failed ones mm. in one average one because he's playing at a position that nobody can find at the moment and that was chris ballard's whole point when he was talking about like you guys want me to draft a qb you want me to draft a qb if you go back and look at how many busts there have been at qb i mean Goff and wentz were one and two in 2016 and they're already been shipped out of town and by the way chris ballard very transparent mm -hmm. yeah. Chris and Bow great at drafting. Chris Bow and great at drafting, <laughs> yeah. scouting. He has a great department. He's good at uh, salary cap as well. He has a lot. He is Chris Ballard is a G. Yeah. But the thing that I like most about him, he'll sit up there at that press conference, okay, just like this show. Now, we have a list of shit, right? We have a list of shit that we should talk about. Uh, Billy Tubes puts his claim in there. Like, okay, if we would talk about some of these things, it would be good for our YouTube numbers, blah, blah, blah. Okay? <laughs> list, list, list. Yeah, so, yeah, then, we start rating and judging and ranking and everything like that. And Billy, there, there, some of those things are on here. But the notes that are taken, don't, they don't have, that doesn't happen for me. That's not the way I operate. Chris Ballard will go into that press conference no notes, no nothing, and just sit there for an hour and a half and just completely why I'm thinking what I'm thinking, how I'm thinking what I'm thinking, and that's a beautiful thing. And whenever you've got guys like that who are incredible at drafting, successful drafters, built a team through the draft, yeah. Quentin Nelson, Darius Leonard, two all pros, back-to-back -back picks with each other, his first draft that he had for the Colts. I mean, the guy is incredible at it. Whenever he's even saying, like, Hey, we don't know. Like, it is going to be very hard to know if these dudes, especially in the world that we currently live in, if they're going to be able to transition into great NFL talent. That's why every time somebody says they won the trade, I think anybody with actual football world is just like, yeah, we'll see. We will see if they win the trade. If you're Miami, though, you already have what? You have two in the first round mm -hmm. plus one early second? Very early second round. And hey, Tua. take it. <laughs> Take the early one, take the late first one, take the early second one. We got motherfucking Russell Wilson and Aaron Jones is allegedly now in conversation. How, how could you not? Like everyone, I, I love Tua. I'd love to see Tua get a chance. How do you turn down Russell Wilson? Well, you, that's... You can't. It goes exactly to what we were just talking about. Is Tua going to be a guy? Maybe. Maybe. We, we have no idea. Maybe. First year, it's hard to judge a quarterback in their first year. Now, granted, they were judging him pretty hard, taking him out, Ryan Fitzmagic in. There's a couple different situations, but two is going to be able to hopefully grow into a better quarterback, and maybe he'll be a dude, which, by the way, makes it even more likely. Like, hey, Seattle, mm -hmm. we'll give you Tua in our two firsts. Let's go. Are we even have the conversation? You got Russell Wilson on that Miami team? That's going to be a blast. And we know he's not going to be fucking around down Miami, right? Mm -hmm. Russell Wilson, team three. He, he is go fins, go church, go ball. Maybe. <laughs> go Halloween. Do we even know who Russell Wilson is anymore? Storming <laughs> out of meetings, wow. demanding trades. Who is this guy? Oh, you're <laughs> saying he's not allowed to be passionate because the guy is a super good guy? Go I, Hawks? Well, I mean, go Hawks. Uh, go Yanks. What is this guy doing? I don't even know who he is. When you get beat up every year with no O line your whole career, Tony, you kind of hit a point well, where next maybe thing we you know, oh, no, I would, asking for I, a trade from God. I would like to say, I would like to say, 
that Gumpy is now going to bat for yeah, Russ I mean, because there seems to be a chance that Russ will I've be. Two weeks ago, he hated Russ him. Bat. Ba- him I, and Ty. Oh find him a clip, and find a clip of me bashing <laughs> Russ. See if you can find one. I've always been by Russ. Right before we went into um, that ad week uh, <laughs> situation, <laughs> the Team 3 release of the news was massive for us. Mm-hmm. So we are going to squeeze that thing completely dry. Mm-hmm. Is he going to Miami? Potentially. Is he going to the Raiders? What's that mean for Derek Carr, who's potentially restructuring a contract? How about Marcus Mariota? Marcus Mariota, backup quarterback for the Oakland Raiders, who got ran out of Tennessee by the Tannehill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He ends up signing an $8 million deal, backup deal for Oakland. This upcoming season, $10 million, with a chance for it to go to 20 if he's a starter. Uh, he had one great half on Thursday Night Football against the Los Angeles Chargers after Derek Carr got his groin ripped in half yeah. on a rollout to the right. He has all of a sudden had a trade market that went very, very high, but then once everybody learned about his contract situation, which means if you trade for him in his contract and he becomes a starter, you're going to owe him 20 20 million dollars so now everybody's saying the raiders are probably going to inevitably end up cutting marcus Mariota. he'll be on the move where is he going to end up at uh what about Derek carr is he going to get cut traded moved what's going to happen with him if russell wilson ends up at the raiders this is a beautiful thing shout out to team three for making up bullshit for us to talk about right here on thursday february yeah. Thank you, Thank you. shout out pete carroll for just wanting to run the ball except for in the super bowl except for in that one time yeah. Except for in that one, <laughs> one time, pretty big moment that ended with Tom Brady screaming at the highest pitch I think I've ever heard a human scream <laughs> with the interception from Malcolm Butler there with Marshawn beast mode Lynch in the backfield. They throw it, obviously, big pick. Now it's come full circle. Pete Carroll saying, hey, we can't win like this. And maybe Pete Carroll's telling Russell and Team 3, like, hey, we're going to run the ball so that our offensive line has a little bit better chance. We're going to run the ball so you're not just dropping back getting killed all the time. So do I have the answer for the O-line right now? No. But I am telling you, we just fired a motherfucker because he had you sitting back there getting killed too much. I'm trying my best. I assume that's what Pete Carroll and the Seattle Seahawks are telling Russell Wilson. But Russell Wilson's like, hey, that weather is nice down there in Miami, Las Vegas. Did you see Circa? That place looks oh, beautiful. <laughs> the Saints. Ooh, Sean Payton down there in the bayou. Him and Kamara, they get cooking, man. Michael Thomas, too. Oh. Drew would never let him go to the Saints. Drew Brees would play till he's 50. Yeah, yep. Drew would come back. Which he still might. Is Drew Brees at this point, no? When he looks in the mirror, that he's staring at a Texan boilermaker, Super Bowl champion, that's holding an entire organization back. Does he know that? Uh, I don't think so. Russ is selling, they're saying go with G E A U X. Oh, yeah. Go, go Saints. Go Saints. <laughs> <laughs> Was it Ed Orger on that? <laughs> Him with Sean Payton would be Ooh. awesome. Sean Payton, savage, incredible playmaker. Uh, designer, I guess, not playmaker. The playmaker would be Russell, who is a playmaker. But you got Russ, Kamara, Michael Thomas, all the boys down there. Latavius Murray, I believe, had a hell of a Emmanuel defense. Emmanuel Sanders. Emmanuel Sanders. And then the only thing you got to worry about, though, is you just jumped right into a division with Uncle Tom in there. Uncle Tom Brady, who's the greatest mm-hmm. of all fucking time. And that team's only going to continue to cook. Maybe that's why he wants to go to the Jets. You know, maybe he's like, well, the Bills are building for sure, but I'm in New York. We got 45 draft picks. Bob Sala, how you doing? Keep it moving. And the Miami Dolphins don't even have a quarterback yet. If they're even thinking about trading for me or Deshaun, maybe I'll do that. What's that, Fox? And he can play shortstop for the Yankees in the offseason. Oh, yeah. oh shit. Same Haas. Boom. One Haas. Wow. Two sports. That's perfect. Legend. Ty Schmidt sitting at home right now. A little He's, off week for oh, him or whatever. White knuckling. <laughs> He's sons of bitches. Sit him to fucking Miami. He's be starting for the New York Yankees. Well, they haven't won a pennant. Maybe he wants to go to Miami because he doesn't want to play actual regular season baseball, and he just wants to play spring training with the Yankees down in Florida. Well, the Yankees are actually in Tampa. We get close, and I know not really. I think I think that is actually a for us. private I jet. Think, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, if we're just going to say private jet <laughs> distances or whatever, uh, the only reason why I know where the Yankees are is because of the Rich Rodriguez, West Virginia, South Florida, uh, Yankees not yet thing. Whenever yep. we went down there and played there, and we drove past their their whole facility or whatever. But yeah, Russell Wilson on a move, wild. 
Okay. Um, hey, did we call Orlovsky? We're trying right now. He didn't answer. No. It's only twelve twenty one. We had to stretch this Russell Wilson conversation for twenty some minutes at this point. Oh my. Twelve twenty five. He said. Oh, uh, oh, oh, he's on Sports Center right now. Nobody's watching. Okay. Can somebody tell me what Orlovsky's saying on fucking Sports Center right now? This Some's, is unbelievable. Something about probably Dak pooping out of yeah. his mouth. Hey, he said Dak not being good or something. Hey, speaking of Dak Prescott, let's go ahead and transition to Dak Prescott. Because Dak, we're talking about Deshaun. He's, I mean, we're team Deshaun Watson over here. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Love. Love Deshaun Watson. Thank Four. you, Deshaun. But with everything that's being reported about the Houston Texans just saying, nah, 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 when people are calling about Deshaun Watson, that feels like that is not. It feels like this Deshaun Watson Houston Texans thing is going to be like, uh, what's that game, Chicken, where you stand in the road or whatever? Yep. Feels like this is going to be a big game of chicken. It feels like Deshaun Watson also at the point where he's like, I'll stand. I don't care. I have enough money. I can wait a whole year if I have to. Then we got to revisit this one year down there. Russell Wilson, as this news is kind of slowly breaking out mm -hmm. right now, feels like there is maybe a little tension on the backside in the building with like uh, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick type situation. So maybe he'll move. The Dak Prescott situation is very fascinating. Coming off a gruesome injury, mm -hmm. nasty injury, mm -hmm. terrible, terrible, terrible injury. Hated to see it. Does he have a cramp? They that, blur it out when they show it. Yeah, it can't, yeah it's a blurred out Jeez. as if it's a uh, Asian porn. The, the way they, <laughs> they, they blur that thing out there, right? So he's coming out of that. That team looked terrible without him. Then they got hot at the end, though. They kind of they kind of started playing, not hot, okay, but they started playing the NFL football mm -hmm. at the end of the season down there. Everybody thought McCarthy, uh, D. Cornair, was D. Cornair's name? That guy stunk. Oh. No one? Mike yeah, Nolan. Nolan. Yeah, Mike Nolan. They, they started figuring it out or whatever, but it was very obvious that Dak Prescott's value went up after he had one of the worst injuries we've ever seen somehow. Now, coming off of that type of injury, you would think with, you know, the past instances, it'd be very difficult to pay somebody a massive four-year, $200 million deal. Yeah. You know, what five year whatever the deal would be for Dak, especially coming off the injury, because we don't know how he's going to recover. Is he going to be the same guy? Remember, Derek Carr, MVP, gets that thing. Still great quarterback, mm -hmm. but would anybody say that Derek Carr is a top five quarterback right now? Mm -hmm. Should they? Maybe. Maybe we should pay attention more. But that injury, he was MVP playing. He was an MVP player. The Raiders were going. He gets his knee twisted, nasty. Still, I just saw it in my head happen because yeah. I was there whenever the whole thing. Ah. He comes back, not the same player after. That happens. Like, that does happen. Dak Prescott gets hurt after signing the franchise tag, which, by the way, is why everybody hates franchise tag and not a long-term deal because there's a chance you're going to get hurt and all that. Is he going to come back and be the same player? If he is going to come back and ha be the same player, is Dallas going to pay him? If Dallas is going to pay him, are they going to be able to put a team around him to do well? All signs are pointing to no, probably. But it, it, that's an interesting situation that's going to pan out very publicly here over the next couple months. And I guess they're nowhere near a long-term deal. Will another team pay him a long-term deal after that injury and never having him in the building? Dak's in an interesting situation right now. So They've been working on this deal for two years. Three. Three years. If you think like, about it, because uh, coming into the, renego they were thinking about extending like, Three years, they're not even close. To this and thing. as I said, like the rumored holdup was between four or five years. Like, if you can't figure that out in three years, it's, it's got to be something. Like, I think, potentially, oh. Cowboys don't want Dak to be their future quarterback. It feels, and by the way, that's what we were saying last year, too. It's like, Jerry, your hands don't get cramps, writing checks. Dak is the face of your franchise. We'll get the deal done then. And since he didn't extend them the year before last, they're like, well, it's only going to get more expensive because he had his best year yet. Then he comes into this franchise tag season, and they weren't winning games or whatever. But, I mean, it's only going to get more and more expensive. And now the conversation is there's no way Dallas can afford him. Uh, there's no way Dallas is going to be able to afford him. He's not going to be able to be there. It's like, well, that's strictly because the Dallas Cowboys didn't want him to be there, didn't want to afford him. And it's the Dallas Cowboys, so it's always going to be, you know, real housewives-type conversation bullshit. Is Dak on the level of being a dude like we were just talking about, or are we just kind? Of, is he still? Is it still up in the air? We got to remember when he was playing his best football, he looked like one of those guys. Yeah. The Dallas Cowboys were allowing fans just to watch their entire practice with notebooks <laughs> and video cameras. True. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of things happening in that building that potentially make it very difficult to win. And even though Dak was having a lot of success, I think a lot of people, including Jerry Jones, say, hey, I just want to see him win a game or whatever. It's like, well, maybe it's the building. Maybe it's the organization. Maybe it's the way things are handled, why they're not winning games, as opposed to just Dak Prescott. Maybe it'll be nice to see Dak somewhere else. I don't think Cowboys fans want to see Dak anywhere else. No. 
And I assume that's why Jerry is still like, oh, we're working. Hey, we off. He's going to talk about a contract. You're going to see leaked numbers about a contract that has been offered to Dak to make it appear from the Dallas Cowboys organization that they have, you know, tried their absolute best to get Dak to sign long term with the Dallas Cowboys. And that is strictly PR wise. Know that whenever we see that number eventually get leaked, because Dak Prescott coming off of that injury, he is also in a position of leverage, I think. He's in a very good uh, – with the Dallas Cowboys. Now with everybody else, not 100% sure. With the D Miami Dolphins, if Dak Prescott goes into free agency, maybe the Denver Broncos, right? They've been on oh, yeah. the yeah. quarterback hunt for a long time. With those teams – and I'm, this is a real question, and I don't think you guys have the answer, and I don't think anybody's like, you know what, I want to hear what these guys have to think about this. <laughs> but do you think D Miami Dolphins give Dak – four-year big deal coming off of that injury, never meeting him before, never having him in your building, that'd be interesting. You think the Denver Broncos would? That'd be interesting to see. Injuries are not a cool thing, especially that type of thing, and if you've never seen the guy before. Well, if, you see, uh, if you're see, if you Dak, too, and you constantly see Jerry give these guys one-year deals on flyers, guys that hadn't p played in, like, a couple years, like, just paid the guy you drafted if you're Dak. Well, the thing Dak... They paid everybody five five year deals, biggest deals, uh, and everywhere, and it was everybody around him. Yep. And he was the one at training camp, right? Zeke wasn't even at training camp; he was down there in Cabo. Nice. He gets paid <laughs> big. He's standing right there behind Dak and Dak are boys. Dak didn't hold out. Dak played. Dak did everything because he said, "Hey, I'm the face of the Dallas Cowboys." Uh, now he's coming off a gruesome injury. Uh, off a franchise tag with a quarterback market that has a lot of quarterbacks potentially in it. I'm intrigued to see how that works out. Joining us now is a man who said Dak Prescott was a bad quarterback. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Orlovsky. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. 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 Uh, never said that. I never, never said, that. said that. Dan, you said <laughs> that this morning. Prove it. Prove that I said he's a bad quarterback. I think we actually do have the clip. I, I mean, I don't know if we've clipped you. It, I think it was actually you utilizing the word dope in an incredibly creative fashion with you running out of the back of the end zone and then following up with the next week being on a three-yard line, same type of situation, rather Cutty. dope. You throw a 97-yard touchdown to Calvin. Never gets talked about, Dan. Never gets nope. talked about. Didn't even have to film of it today, conveniently. Very convenient. It's almost like they're setting you up to fail over there. But let's talk about setting you up to fail. You said Dak Prescott stinks this morning on Get Up. <laughs> Why did you say that? My big thing, Dan, with Dak Prescott is he played his best football he has ever played. They did not win, okay? They were not a winning team. They did not get into the playoffs. Now, is that yeah. Dak's fault? Is that the organization's fault? He's coming off a gruesome injury, yeah. one that they had to blur out. That whole situation with Dak moving forward is one that I don't see. I don't have any clue how it's going to work out. Yeah, uh, listen, I think Dak's a good player. Never said he stunk, just for clarification purposes. Mm. Um, let me, let me, this is what people who, because the know. Cowboys have such a big fan base, and Dak's a good player that people lose sight of. So I'm, my job is to keep it real. You said he played his best football in 2019. They didn't make the playoffs. He also led the NFL in touchdown passes when they were down by more, multiple uh, touchdowns, multiple scores, excuse me. Okay, so. Played his football is, is very much so with an asterisk. Uh, last year, when everyone's like, man, he led the NFL in passing. All right, so they were really bad in the five starts that he played in. In the first half of those five starts, he has four touchdowns and four turnovers. So they were really bad in part because he did not play great in the first half of those football games. And then the second half, he threw for 1,000 yards in five games when they were down multiple scores. That's why he led the NFL in passing for a chunk of time. So, so you like, said yes, he stinks. played good, his best football. But since 2017, the four years, and I know this was an abbreviated year because of injury, since 2017, they're 29 and 25 with him as the starting quarterback. Quarterback wins aren't just stat for telling you how good they are, but that's just good. Like, that's got to tie into it at some point. It's just good football. They averaged in that four-year span 23 points a game with him starting. That's about average in the NFL. So, like, he's a good quarterback, but you can't play pay good quarterbacks, great quarterback money, and expect you to be a really good football team. It doesn't work like that. It happened to a couple of your friends, Goff, Wentz, things like that. I do believe that's potentially what's scaring the hell out of Jerry Jones. We've talked about that uh, this year. Is like, hey, if you pay a guy, you got to know that you're going to potentially be able to go win with him. That team completely Dude, crumbled. Look at Seattle. 
Look at Seattle right now. Well, that's what I was going to hold on. That's why. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I, I was going to pivot to Seattle with that. If you're if you're the Dallas Cowboys and you don't believe in Dak, do you think another team? Believes in Dak coming off of that injury with the way that do you think he'll get the deal that he's looking for somewhere else? Because if you've never had him in your building, right, which everybody says incredible leadership, uh, he's what you want in a guy, he's everything. But if you're like the Dolphins or the Broncos or a team that's potentially in the market for a quarterback, is Dak going to be a guy you're going to pay long term, especially coming off of that injury? I just don't know. I don't know how that's going to play out. I think teams would. I think the Cowboys want to pay him long term. I think the Cowboys want to pay him at a certain number. They just don't want to allocate 20% of their cap to him over five years or four years. Like, that's hard to, it's really hard to do that when you don't have a freakazoid at quarterback and still win football freakazoid. games as an organization. I think teams would, abs- I don't think they would do it this year, Pat, because the Cowboys, to go get Dak from the Cowboys this year, you'd have to offer up multiple first round picks and shell out a huge chunk of cash. Like, that's going to be I – don't, I don't think Miami – Dak's about to be a free that. agent. I don't think the Jets would do that. Dak's about to be a free agent after his franchise tag runs up. But let's talk about guys that aren't free agents. Let's talk about Deshaun, and let's talk about Russell. Whenever you talk about a freakazoid at quarterback, I was just – I was talking about this uh, when you were supposed to come on, and then uh, you had to do your real job, so you came on a little bit later. And I was going to pivot right into you because you have great uh, – you know, a great mind about this type of thing. 2021 NFL season, 2022, 2023, 24, 25. Go ahead and just do it for the next 20, 25 years, probably with the way the game's going. You got to have a dude at quarterback. If you're Seattle and if you're Houston, you got a dude at quarterback, but they're not happy with being there. The Seattle Seahawks, it seems like we got a Tommy fucking Foxborough situation potentially brewing with Russell storming out of meetings with Pete and them. But there's no way Houston moves on from Deshaun, right? I want it for Deshaun because I'm on team Deshaun, but they're not even answering phone calls seattle said it's going to take three ones if you're either of those franchises what would would you move on knowing that those three ones might never ever come back with a return of another quarterback that could be a dude because there's only a few of those out there and deshaun and russell are those guys i don't think houston's going to have a, ch- a choice i think houston is going to have to move deshaun watson we hope so by the way i've spoken about this like i what has been communicated in the media about what has gone on down there does not paint the whole picture of how bad it is. And I think that Houston, it, it depends on That's how ugly they want to get. <laughs> like, it, it, how ugly they, do they want to get? Because if they play hardball, I think Deshaun Watson and his camp will play hardball. And I, I, that's what I believe. David Mogetta is a very good and powerful agent. Let's and, go. Um, how ugly Perfect. are they willing to make it if, if they're saying we don't want to move them? I also think they need to be really smart because I get your point. You can't you, you don't know if you're going to get a superstar quarterback. I will say this this year. There's two teams that play in the same division that have multiple first round picks. They don't have that next year. At some point, you got to sit back and be honest about the situation. If you're Houston and go, OK, he ain't going to play for us. He doesn't want to be here. He doesn't like our owner. Um, we need to pit those two teams against each other and get as much as we can, you know? I don't think Seattle's going to move on from Russell. No. Mm -hmm. I think Russell can start to make things very uncomfortable for them for the future, but I don't think Russell will move on out of Seattle anytime soon. Did you read that article? You're on TV crushing it, by the way. You always do great. Yeah. 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 There's an article that's come out about, like, he stormed out of a meeting after some game, and then he called uh, the Seattle Seahawks after sitting in Roger Goodell's suite while watching the Bucks Chiefs, and they didn't give him his answer. That's why uh, this this Team 3 messaging started coming out about him wanting to move on. It seems like – now, Russell Wilson has not said any of this. It's his team around him, right, which is a creative way to protect Russell Wilson's image so that we don't have the COVID cowboy take of, who is this guy? We don't even know who this guy is anymore. So uh, you don't think – Think, you you think that Deshaun Watson uh, will be able to play hardball more than Russell Wilson would be able to up there in Seattle if Russell really wanted? Because it sounds like from these stories getting leaked out, by the way, it sounds like there's a reason these stories are being leaked right now, and it feels like that's for PR purposes for Russell to potentially take a stand. You you think more Deshaun because they're going to be forced to basically less Russell because they won't have the same type of situation? Yeah, I think Russell's. Um, unpleasantry comes from football. It's it's all about football and the way oh. the team is being built and whatnot. I think Deshaun's is off the field, and um, Deshaun is a human being, as a person, as a guy. You know, and I, I think that's why 
Deshaun will kind of put his foot in the ground and not move off of his demands or his desires more than Russell. I think that once you disagree about football with your coach, your organization, you know, I, I do think that um, cool heads can sit down and talk and figure out what the end result that both parties want could be. Um, I don't think that's going to happen in Houston. That's all. Uh, I, I would say this. I, I think that. Oh, no, about to say no. oh what is he back think? And really good players are around. And I don't know if they feel that they can go on that run again. Your service is so bad. I, I mean, it's just you and AJ Hawk trying to just tank the show all the time. The two guys that played for so long, made so much money. Somehow, every time the service just tries to. It's my town, it's my town, dude. My town will not allow cell phone cell phone towers. Man, that's that problem when you live up in that, you know. Oh, you know yeah, yeah, you gotta live. Mm -hmm. Classic. You, you live where we live. Like, hey, they're like, put that 5G up. <laughs> put that in. Do whatever you gotta do. You know what I mean? Hey, where we live. Um, when you went home uh, Sunday morning, how did you get home? It was Monday morning, and it was yeah. right before my show. And the reason why I was yeah. able to do that is because there was a plane, more yeah. specifically, a Citation X that was available down there that had two pilots and could get to Indianapolis. Yeah, I, I sat in row 23B, okay? <laughs> well, that's because... You choose to live in a place where they don't love cell phone towers <laughs> and you have seven kids and you got no extra money. That's that's on you. Yeah, your kids are awesome. I was telling the boys about the trip. Your kids are the absolute best. Now, I assume it is just hell being raised all the time, but getting a chance yeah. to see your kids operate down there was fantastic. Your family's a cool family. Thanks, bro. I appreciate that. It was great to finally meet Sammy, who um, obviously is – is one of a kind, an angel. It was so great to run into you, although you big time to me on that workout. I thought we were going to go kind of get you, a little Baywatch on. You did um, not think that. <laughs> you never thought that. I didn't. I, yeah, I, I thought there was absolutely zero chance that you would go workout. By the way, zero. And by, I went up onto my patio, you know, my adult section, grabbed my yeah, vitamins. You called, me, you called me from the adult only section while I was down with my kids going, where are you? And I'm in there waving, and I'm like, oh, you're where all the rich, rich people of the resort are staying. Okay. Um, but true, true story. I true do story. Well. My I... kids, who I don't even know how they know who Pat McAfee is other than our interactions and the stuff you said. My kids were like, can you get us a picture with Pat McAfee? And I'm looking at him like, fellas, am I nothing? Do I just pay <laughs> bills? <laughs> that's awesome i'm happy i big time them keep them humble they live in a town with no cell phone towers that's something that, that uh, maybe old uncle pat will have to do throughout their entire life you know keep a little grit in those kids uh but while you said you were going to go on a run uh, my lady and i we grabbed the best vitamins we could find yep. went out to the patio and we tried to find you yeah you did all your running the day before on the beach but that morning you did not run you lied you uh you did it for clout nope. you were not running on the beach at all that wow morning. I did. I did a T twenty workout in my room with my wife. Thank you much. All right, Dad, I don't. I don't. I don't let a day go by, bud. I don't let a day go by. Beat cheese and waits for nobody. <laughs> <laughs> you do look fantastic. You got to go do Sports Center. I appreciate you, Dan. A lot. Thank you, boys. Hey. Hey. I love that man, Dan. All. I his kids are awesome. But Uncle Pat is going to have to probably humble them a little bit, if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. No cell phone tires allowed in yeah. uh, the. The town, yeah. the gated which, community. Hey, which might be a good thing. They don't have cell phones. Oh. You're right. If they so. do, though, because they watch our show. Yeah. Shout out to Orlovsky's kid. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Triple pad here. You can, go, you can call me for anything you don't want to talk to Dan about. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now, don't call me now. You're too young. I hate you. But whenever you get older, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I'll have time. When you can buy lottery tickets. 25, 30 years old. Yeah, when you get 30, 35, go ahead and give me a call. There it is. Oh, yeah. I talked to Phil's uh, eldest daughter yesterday, Bella. How'd that go? Pretty good. I feel like I am a pretty good little uncle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Pretty good. She was going in to get extra work in, by the way. Push sleds and, like, get a workout in for soccer. Jeez. Oh, wow. oh, yeah. I was like, what are we doing? We're going to waste our time in there? She's like, uh, no. I'm like, that's what I'm talking about, Bella. Like, Fucking go in there and get better, huh? Let's go ahead and go for it. All this time. You, know, you got it. She's laughing or whatever. And back, and I'm like, Phil, tell her I'm being serious. Like, What's, are we trying to make it or are we not? You know, it feels like yeah, yeah. relaxed. You don't work out, you don't eat, okay? Hey, you don't eat, you don't live. Correct. Oh, yeah. You don't live, guess what? Dead.
Don't need you to be dead, Bella. Need you to push the goddamn sled. <laughs> All this time, we thought little Phil was going to be playing for the Penguins, but really, Phil's daughter's going to be playing for the U.S. Women's she Soccer Team. Cup. She I, believes Cup. Hey, by the way, shout out to the United States. Shout out to the United States. Six zip over Argentina in the uh, in the championship. Oh, <laughs> Take that, Messi. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Argentinians, how you play a little soccer? So do we. <laughs> Brazil uh, beat the dog shit out of Canada mm. in the uh, third Man, place two match. Nothing. That's two nothing. nothing. Could have been more though. Brazil was holding back. Oh, you didn't catch the second half. Canada came on strong. Buzzing. I thought Girls were buzzing. They scored zero. Not strong enough. So they did not come on that. Well, the keeper for Brazil was unbelievable. It was interesting. I couldn't bet on that. Huh. Hmm. At FanDuel. What's going on with that? Which camera? <laughs> that one. I switched on you. What's going on with that, Jordan? What's going on there? Huh. Huh. We had a pretty good we had a pretty good tell that the United States women's team was gonna beat yeah. the dog shit out of Argentina. Yeah. Had a little inside. By the way, She Believes Cup champions, United States. Two years in a row. How you doing? Two years, just like World Wars, back to back. How you yeah, doing? Baby. And we had a little bit of a tell that we were gonna go and go and win. Couldn't find it to bet on it. I guess it wasn't regulated. What's that all about? Come on. Uh, it's a sport. 42 minutes into this show. We answer some phone calls on the other side. one 888 mad dog 6 <laughs> 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 Big thanks to Orlovsky Fitness in between two sports center hits. Probably a lot of conversation about Russell, Deshaun, oh, yeah. Dak, everything like that. And he'll go out there, by the way. He, it's good that he doesn't have phone service because he will throw himself right into a firestorm. And the Dak Prescott Dallas Cowboy thing this morning, when he said that Dak stunk at football. Despicable. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Said, yeah. And are these receipts for him saying that I said Carson Wentz stunk? You remember when he did that on ESPN? Oh, it's oh, real, yeah. Which you never did. Which I never said. Never. So maybe this is a little bit of a receipt for old suit and tie Dan. Yeah, get the trash can out, huh? Oh, Dan, you remember, remember when that? you said huh. Dak Prescott stinks? Scum. In the trash you go, Dan. He just wants to be first at Darnold being better than everybody else. Huh. It was fascinating to me, him talking about, now granted, Darnold still in a rookie contract, I think, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. Still in, One so, last year. So we can't judge... You know, because that's how we judge every quarterback. It's like, how much do they cost? Because what he is saying about Dak Prescott, if you don't believe, I'm not saying this is my take, but if you don't believe he can win a Super Bowl on his back, basically, which is what has to happen with these massive quarterback contracts, you can't, you can't give him that contract. Now, if you think your team is potentially, you know, a shitbag operation needs Dak Prescott, you got to pay the guy. Oh, yeah. But if you don't have a quarterback, you're, is Andy Dalton going to be the quarterback of the Cowboys next year then? Is that what you're going to do? I don't know. Magic. Jameis. 188. Oh, Jameis or Cam next year? Jameis. Jameis. Unless it's the Patriots, then Cam. Still Jameis. There you go. Is wow. it because you're a Dolphins fan? No, because he's been in the system. 188. Mad Dog 6. We're going to calls on the other side. It's the Pat McAfee Show. Tonight, we have a straight-to-hell match in which the devil will battle against our office wrestler, Dylan Boston. You might be wondering how we got here. Let's find out right now. And now, we have to make a deal with the devil. Yeah, no big deal. Classic trial by combat situation. We got our champion, Dylan Bostic. All he's got to do, win the match, one, two, three, and we're home safe. The only man that would take the job to protect us from the devil himself, Dylan Bostic. Like you mentioned, Pat, there's probably about five or six other guys we'd rather have in this position, but we'll take Bostic, I guess. Not only are all of our souls on the line, the Office Championship Wrestling Championship presented by Natural Light is also on the line. No, Jesus, the devil's no, trying to put I God in right to hell. hell. I do not want to Good go God, to hell. no. Don't do Good it. Good God, no. Come on, Bostic, man. Oh, no. Oh, my. I'll see you in hell, Pat. The goddamn Easter Bunny's out here. What the hell's he doing here? The Easter Bunny is obviously here to help Dylan Bostic. Wait a minute. No! 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 The Easter Bunny's been on the devil's side this whole time. Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Jesus what the hell's Christ. Jesus Christ doing here? The power of Christ is compelling Dylan Bostic. Look at this, Pat! Jesus Christ is bringing Bostic back to life! Jesus is going insane! And now Bostic's kicking wholesale ass in the ring! 
Jesus Christ has come to help Dylan Bostic defeat the devil and defeat the Easter Bunny. What's gonna happen here? Good God Almighty, it looks like he's going up in the scissor lift. Jesus is lifting the scissor lift. Jesus is now telling Bostic to come down. Don't do it, Bostic, don't no. do it. The bed, the devil, super kick, into the casket, the the devil goes down, the devil goes down, shuts the casket, shut the hell, the devil goes straight back to hell where he belongs, with the assist from Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Dylan Bostic saves the PMI office's souls and wins. OCW Championship right here on our first OCW Straight to Hell. McAfee at the top of the key. Five seconds, four seconds. Step back, three for the win. It's good! Smash! It's not Sunday because the bank is open! Give us a call at 888-MAD-DOG-6. Pat wants to hear from you. No, not really. He just ran out of things to talk about. This is the Pat McAfee Show. That is 100% true. Another thing that's 100% true is that Bright Cellars, shout out Diggs, is the wine subscription service that helps you find the wines you love without the normal intimidation and pretentiousness that you're used to. No Dan Orlovsky's in this situation. No, 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 no. We've got some winos in the office here, which is who I just shouted out there, yeah. Diggs. And it, we're getting... A bunch of them. Nick is as well. I'm kind of getting to that age now where a lot of my friends nice. are becoming winos. It's uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I, I am not, but a lot of the boys in here Sophisticated. have become winos. And uh, I might have to get into it because whether you're new to wine or have been drinking it for years, Bright Cellars is perfect for you. All you have to do is take their 30 second quiz and they will pair you with six unique and personalized wines. Bright Cellars sources their wines from all over the world. Spain. What? Portugal. What? what? Australia. What? South Africa. What? I'd assume France and many more. Plus, they have wine education cards so you can learn about the wines and know what food pairs well with your wine that you're drinking. Here in the office, we got a little charcuterie board Friday going on. We got shark board Friday. Friday. Can't wait. Big board tomorrow. The last board was called into question about whether or not it was a lazy shark board maker. Mm -hmm. Shark board maker said... If King Louis the Thirteenth was still hiring shark board makers, he would have been hired two weeks ago. Wow. So there's a little bit of a controversy on whether or not the shark board was good or not. But with Bright Sellers, they'll let you know what's good, what isn't good with what you're eating. Shark board, how it goes well with a nice French red. To top it all off, Bright Sellers members also get access to exclusive premium wines for private wine labels. It takes all of us, okay? So skip the store and get your wine delivered straight to your door. Get it? Yes. Bars. Whoa. Special, no bars, to your door, actually. <laughs> Special occasion, you have the wine on deck. For our listeners, they're giving you 50 For listeners and watchers of this show, nice. okay, they are offering 50% off what your first f- six Whoa. bottle orders what? from Bright Sellers. Excuse me? That is B-R-I-G-H-T-C-E-L-L-A-R-S dot com forward slash Pat50. That's Pat50. That's Bright Sellers, B-R-I-G-H-T-C-E-L-L-A-R-S dot com 
forward slash Pat50 and take their seven question quiz to get your wine matches and receive a limited time offer of 50% off your first six bottle order. Ooh. This is a great deal to try new wines from all over the world. So head to brightsellers.com forward slash Pat50 uh, for 50% off your first Bright Sellers box. Now, when you do the quiz, they're going to shape that for you. Uh -huh, yeah. But if they're giving 50% off uh, bottles of wine, uh, don't be scared to go in there and answer those questions. Give that as a gift, which is what I am going to do immediately. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As Damn. you become an adult, you got to show up at people's things. Of course. And order, oh, what you bring? Sorry. Always just grab fucking bottle of wine. Here you go. Yeah, from Bright Sellers. Here you go. It's unbelievable. This is unbelievable. 50% off. That is a that is a bad business move yeah. by them. Do it with a company. Foolish. It's almost like they're calling our people out, isn't it? Sort of. Sure sounds like Feels it. like it almost. Hey, Bright Sellers doesn't know, okay, that whenever you you test the beast, whenever you try the lion, whenever you say, hey, we're offering 50% off, we're going to lose money on this deal to the internet in general, mm -hmm. but our people, I mean, you're going to get got, okay? Man. You're going to get yours, I guess, at some point potentially, but you're going to get got in a pretty heavy fashion. And this particular 50% off offer, you're going to get got, Bright Sellers. I appreciate you. You're an incredible company. The boys have turned into full winos, wow. and they... They're speaking as if they fucking know what they're talking about <laughs> because of the education cards and all that, which is awesome. Uh, but you're probably going to go out of business, which is what we appreciate. B-R-I-G-H-T-C-E-L-L-A-R-S.com forward slash P-A-T-5-0-Pat-5. Hell yeah. Let's get to a phone call here before we got to get out of here on this hard hot Thursday. Throwback Thursday, by the way. Uh, let's go to Zach over there in Pennsylvania. What's going on, Zach? Hey, how's it going, Pat? Shout out to the boys. Shout out. Shout, Shout out. out. Shout out. Uh, shout out to uh, the Colts and the Jags and the Titans for donating to Houston down shout there, out. too. Shout, shout out. out. Shout out. Um, I'm just calling today to ask uh, Diggs over there. Maybe tone it down a little bit with the juju hate. Uh, he wants to come back to Pittsburgh. No, he doesn't. He's lying. He wants Madden to come back, dude. Uh, uh, he's Matt too busy alive. fucking dancing with Power Rangers in the park. Uh, run the clip, Foxy. Juju is dancing with Power Rangers. This is from Team Juju. This is from his Actually. Juju TikTok account, I would assume. Juju is in a park that does seem to be warm out, dancing with the entire Power Ranger squad. Whoa. Actually, he's not even—he's not even dancing. He's what? on their coattails. Oh no, no, he danced. You, listen, when you're with the Power Rangers, okay, you're not going to jump yeah, in there no. and fuck up their choreography, no, no, okay? No. Power Rangers been doing this for a long, long time, all right. So if he's going to hit the Corvette, Corvette with them, he's going to do that. Actually, you know what this is? The Power Rangers are dancing with. None of Juju. None, none, yeah. None, 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 yeah. None, none. yeah, there the it is. Power Rangers wow. get to dance with Juju. Anything, that's how this goes. Them from developing into Megazord together. Um, but that's exact same dance he was doing on third and 12, down 20 in the fucking no, playoffs. No. On the field. Oh, yeah. On the field. No, dude. He's enjoying himself. He's having a good time. I'm sorry there. he likes his job. He just wants yeah. to have on, fun, Tony. Tony. Listen, when the fan base is all they care about is the Pittsburgh Steelers and they feel that they care about winning more than you do. There's going to be an issue. What about when Dewey Haskins is out slapping Ben's cheeks? our quarterback! Still Anyways, <laughs> that is going to be something that Pittsburgh Steelers fans are quite divided upon. Yeah. And I do notice the difference in the division. It seems to be one trait, and it is measured. Mm -hmm. And it's time, mostly, Years. on Earth. <laughs> yeah. And then once this one here, if you just go right above that, yeah. they... Get him out. Get him out. We're not paying 15 million to this guy. He's dancing with fucking Power Rangers. <laughs> Underneath there, it's like the guy's enjoying himself. Had nine touchdowns last year. Had his uh, career high last year. In the big moments, he was the guy getting targeted. Put a seat Let on him his dance chest. a little bit. Come on. Let him Corvette, Corvette. He learned his lesson. He's not going to be dancing on logos anymore. Uh-uh. All right? If he promises that, we'll talk. No, I don't. See, by the way, what he just said there is a lie because that people that are above that one particular age, Steelers fans, they are not talking. And by the way, this group, they are not talking. They are yelling. They, yeah, it is oh, a yell. Yeah. They are yelling at each other. Now you's going down. Now you go down. You ain't never been down down. You go to the south side. Fuck it, he's dancing. He's having fun. He stinks. He's good. Oh, yeah. Power Rangers. No juju. <laughs> I'll flop. Pittsburgh's a wild place. Claypool can do it for cheaper. Wow. TikTok and We <laughs> are wrapping up our one here. We're back on the other side with more of your phone calls. This is the Pat McAfee Show, Thursday. If something happens one time, anomaly. Happens two times, it's like, oh, okay, maybe. But whenever there's a trend of 18 plus, 20 plus things being predicted, you got to go like, hey, Gronick, the gig's up. We know. 
You're a time traveler. Just tell us. Bro, I just want to talk to you. I got so many questions. Siegfried and Roy uh, tiger attack. Do you remember that? Of course. Do you remember back in the day how tight Siegfried and Roy were with their tigers? It was like every main story was like, oh, these tigers are the best behaved animals on earth. Blah, blah, blah. Simpsons in 1993 said the tiger is going to turn. This little friendly tiger is going to become an enemy of Siegfried and Roy quickly, and it's going to happen. 2003, it actually happened. Autocorrect errors, 1994. Before you could even play Snake on the gray little box phone, they they predicted that autocorrect will happen on your phone. Are you kidding me? Didn't happen until 2007. FaceTime, 1995. Not even a thought. I don't even know if anybody knew what the fuck the internet was. Oh, that's that right. little mark with the A and then the ring around it. At. See, that's what I said. Mm -hmm. No. What, what do you is say internet that, anyway? In 1995, they said, don't worry. You'll be carrying around a device where you will be face-to-face -face with somebody on the opposite side of Earth. 1995, they said that. 2010, it happened. Faulty voter machines. 2008, they predicted it. 2012, it became the forefront of conversation in a big, big way. I assume these voter machines have been up in question for a long, long time, but they just knew that it was going to come to fruition in 2012. No, I want to vote for Obama. Two votes for McCain. Uh, come on, it's time for a change. Three votes for McCain. The God particle. Now, this is the big one. Ty Schmidt did research. He said the God particle is the absolute reason why he is 1,000% a time traveler. Homer Simpson got up there like fucking Matt Damon in that movie where they have that... Goodwill hunting. Goodwill hunting and draws up this equation for what the God particle is, which what is the God particle? Yeah, it's, it's basically, it's this equation that essentially like explains how the universe was created. And they did that in 1998, and the exact equation happens in 2012. That's unheard of. 14 years ahead of time. They got Homer Simpson up there looking like that goddamn janitor from Harvard, solving equations up on a chalkboard, and 14 years later, it's like, yeah, that's actually how the universe was founded. It's like, wait a fucking minute, little comedy writer with a goddamn yellow cartoon, bro? That's insane. The NSA spying scandal. Everybody knew that the Patriot Act was, like, in existence, but nobody had a clue that NSA literally knows everything about you. Every dick you've sent has been seen by some government agency, but it wasn't always like that. We didn't know that everything was getting spied on, Sean. Nobody knew that. I didn't know. They predicted that in 2007, 2013 it happened. No, Lisa, it's not like the government is listening to everybody's conversation. Smartwatches. 1995, they said it would happen. 2014, they came to fruition. America's Ebola outbreak. 1997, they said it. 2014. Do you remember? Do you remember when Ebola hit? It was like it, it was literally hospitals like shutting down. Oh, they had people wearing like hazmat suits, carrying people around because they were scared Ebola was possible. In the modern world, this was happening. Years and years and years and years ago, Matt Gronick said this is going to happen. The FIFA corruption scandal, 2014, they called it 2015. It came all crashing down. Everybody knew they were getting their, their pockets greased, making decisions, sending a World Cup to a goddamn desert. Matt Gronick said it's going to happen. It happened. Greece's debt default, 2012, they called it 2015. It happened. So many countries out there, by the way. That's, they picked Greece. The exact country to happen. Trump's presidency. 2000, they called it. 2016, it came to fruition. The Simpsons called this President Trump out there. And everybody probably looked at all oh, those, those Simpsons guys are so funny. Bang, 16 years later, it is about to happen. It goes down. Um, Lady Gaga Super Bowl halftime show, 2012, they called it. 2017. I mean, I think we all knew that she was born this way. She would probably get to halftime show at some point. But to the details that they had. These are not coincidences. Coincidence I. I don't know how you pronounce it. How the fuck do they know this stuff? He's I mean, a time. It's gotta be time traveler. Matt Gronig is a time traveler. I have so many fucking questions. Disney's takeover of Fox, 1998. They said it, 2017, it happens. The Shard in London, which is a building behind Big Ben, I guess. Is that right? Apparently, that's what uh, Google search said. 1995, 2009, it comes to fruition. Robot librarians, 95, they called it. 2016, it happens. The censorship of Michelangelo's David, 1990, 2016, it happened. Three-eyed fish from the fucking um, nuclear waste place. In Japan. Three-eyed fish comes to fruition in 2001. Macronix did it in 1990. 9-11. 9-11. 
They called that happening. If you do recall planes going into buildings, they said it in 1997, 2001, it happens. The Syrian uprising, everything that's going on in the Middle East has all been talked about on The Simpsons. And then he created another show called Futurama. And that is huge. He created another show like, yeah, listen, here's me rubbing it in the face that that's where I could go if I have to. I have so many questions for Matt Gronick, and guess what, Matt Gronick? The gig's up. We know. I'm all in on you, Matt. And I'm a fan, by the way, aren't we? We're big fans. We're I'm just a huge talking. fan. If you want to travel to future me or current me or past me and say what's up, I think we would all be appreciated. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hour two on this Thursday, February 25th, 2021. We'll begin immediately following this beat drop from Twine. Okay, shout out to Twine for that. That thing seemed to fall a little bit harder today. I appreciate that. All the boys here at COVID Cowboy Tone Diggs, Boston Connor, Bubba Gumpino, at Viva Lazito, the boys in the back. I said all the boys. That was a lie. Ty's not here. Man, Sarah's not here. I hope you boys are enjoying your week. Ty uh, got checked, uh, as everybody should. Uh, shout out to Edzo, Eddie Olchek, for his statement yesterday awesome. about getting a colonoscopy and everything like that. It might be uncomfortable, uh, but it saved his life and it will save others' lives as well. Let's move forward here into the sports world. A uh, couple things are coming out. Zach Stevens, who I'm not 100% sure who he is, he just tweeted out that the Broncos have nearly $45 million in cap space oh, next ooh. season. Oh, Look wow. for them to be active not only in the free agent market because they're, I mean, they're getting rid of Von Miller, right? Mm. Right. So they're getting rid of Von, like, yeah. uh, Drew Locke. Allegedly, Dennis. Denver had a trade for a quarterback damn near done and something happened. Michael Lombardi told us that of the GM shuffle pod, also hammered down host. Uh, he said that there was a deal already done and somehow one of the teams backed out. I don't know if it would have been Denver or another team, but I guess Drew Locke is now not going to be the guy, See ya. allegedly. Now, will they be able to sign a free agent quarterback? Will they be able to trade for somebody? Maybe. They're allegedly in the sweepstakes for everybody in the market, just like the Patriots, by the way, mm -hmm. have had a meeting about everybody that's been in the quarterback market. Is Russell Wilson adding to that market with uh, another day passing with Team 3, putting out a message about here's where we will think or consider going? It's all very interesting in the NFL. It is a 24-7, 365 league, which makes our jobs a a lot easier speaking of our jobs being a lot easier if the person i just texted would answer <laughs> Come on. my text message it would make my job our Come job on. and the world's job a lot easier wouldn't it simple question oh, yeah. literally right before we go on the air i say i'd like to talk about jj watt right now wouldn't i yeah, yeah. i'd like to be able to talk about the alleged 14 to 15 million dollar offer that has already come in because i would have never expected um a release of information like that because that's coming from jj's people right so diana rossini who's by the way right now she has been yeah. crushing diana rossini oh, has absolutely you, been diana. crushing right now uh thank you diana obviously uh she said jj watt has received several offers from teams okay so let's assume that's from jj's people mm -hmm. uh the best offer he has received right now is between 15 to 16 million per year Per sources. Okay. okay. So 15 to 16 mil would put him, what, 10, you said, overall on it DX? It was like seven or eight. Yeah, top 10 in, in the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So J.J. Watt, by the way, still demanding a high cash amount. Now, if he didn't already just say yes to that, that means he is potentially still seeking his best option. Is he want to play somewhere on a cheaper salary so he could potentially be in a better position to win a ring? Is he going to go do that? Will he take a 15 to $16 million offer somewhere and say, hey, I could still probably make 45 to $50 million in my career here. Maybe I should maybe I should think about another $50 million Ooh. potentially. I mean, that is a tough balance, but I thought he got out of Houston to get to a place where he could win. Is the $15, $60 million coming from a team that could, could go on a run? I'd assume no. 
I might be wrong, but I'd assume it's not a team that's already put together and ready to go. Maybe it's a team that's building that has some space. Maybe it is Denver out with Vaughn in with J.J. Watt or something like that. But if you're talking about, uh, you know, Bucks, if you're talking about Chiefs, if you're talking about him potentially going ring chasing to any other place, it seems maybe the Steelers even, it seems like those teams will not – Buffalo, I don't think they'll be offering 15 to 16. Maybe they will. I'm not 100 sure. But it just feels like that's an offer from a team that we are not considering. And is J.J. potentially considering that, realizing now that he potentially has another $50 million to be made in his career if he wanted to after just getting cut from the Houston Texans? This is a wild time for J.J. And I asked, is any of this shit real? Hmm. So I, I, I sent him a text. Simple. Simple. I don't need what? I just need a yes or a no. Is this all bullshit or not? He's probably working out if I had to guess right now. Yeah. Well, could it be a team, too, like Miami or Seattle, who's kind of just figuring out, you know, who's going to play quarterback for them next year? And so he's just waiting to see where those chips fall, too. Yeah, I would assume that he would like to get a better picture, a full picture on things whenever he starts making his decisions on where he's going to head to. The Miami Dolphins, if they make a play for Russell Wilson or Deshaun Watson. Yeah. It's in Miami. There's no state tax. No, no. Everybody talks about Tampa, no state tax. That team, by the way, uh, defense. Good to go. Hey, they hunt out there. Yeah. yeah. He'll be able to come in. And by the way, if J.J. doesn't have a superhero-like year, still going to be a great asset to a defense that is already playing great ball right now. B. Flo is a guy that everybody says that all the players love all the time. Uh, th- that's, that is a potential. And if they have Russell Wilson at quarterback, you automatically think to yourself, are the Dolphins about to go on a little bit of – now, it's going to be tough in the AFC, especially with Carson Wentz coming over here Absolutely. with uh, the Indianapolis Colts and all that. But that's a team that automatically quickly becomes a ring-chasing opportunity as well. Young team too, though, and then you get Kyle Van Noy and J.J. Watt, two leaders on the defense, along with Xavier Howard, who was unbelievable this year. I mean, Think that defense Don- is stacked. Hey, down in Miami – JJ, he could throw the shit out of those balls to the fans, yeah. you know, because it's humid. It's always hot. A little nice bit. Houston, stadium. Houston also, though. Houston also pretty thick, Donner. True. I think no matter what, the Dolphins are in a good spot, though. Like you get, you think about it. Well, not. I, th- I think. I think even if you stick with Tua for a year, use these draft picks to get some weapons. Find out what he is for a year. I don't think you're in a bad position any way you go. There's no Dolphins fans thinking I want to win a Super Bowl next year no. unless you get Russ. If you get then Russ, you're like, let's then, go. Yeah. If you don't get Russ or Deshaun, you think with Tua, like, okay, let's find out this year if Tua is the guy. Is the guy or not? Playing the fourth. Put some team. Let's put some people around him. Uh, we ran off uh, the the offensive coordinator who has donated so much of his life to the great sport of football. Mm. Uh, Bubba Gumpino ran him out of town. Let's go ahead and give him another opportunity to see if he's the guy. I guess that's a good mindset, but that's a much different mindset than oh, we're going to win Super Bowl this yeah. year. And it's a much different world. The highs and lows that you would feel every single week. What's up, Dick? Uh, cap space for teams that we've talked about potentially JJ going to. The Chiefs are minus eighteen million in the hole. Packers are minus five. The Steelers are minus five. Uh, let's see here. The Titans are one one million over the cap. The Bills are three million over the cap. What really, are the Browns? Browns are twenty five million over, and the Colts are fifty million over. Over. Under. Under. Sorry, under. Are all those under or over? So the Colts fifty million. Because you just you Colts, a lot of overs. Colts fifty million under. Who else? The Bucks are twenty five million under the cap. Oh. The Browns are $25 million under the cap. All right. All the other teams, the Chiefs, Steelers. Over. Yeah. Got it. So the Bucks Packers. potentially, but is that where they're going to spend their money? I'm not 100% sure. Now, will they bring back Ndamukong Sue? What will that deal look like with Ndamukong Sue if he wants to continue to play, which he has alluded to? Uh, JPP still down there. What were you going to say, Nick? The Bucks. don't you think they'd probably re-sign Shaq Barrett instead of pulling, coming from the outside, bringing a player in? They'd probably take care of their own guys. Yeah, they uh, – um, the 15 to 16 million. What is the cap space? Where is that Detroit? Whoa. Yeah, not going to a rebuild. So head to Goff and Dan Campbell. That'd be perfect. Okay. For no, no. I'm, the 15 to 16 million is not coming to a team, I'd assume, no. coming De- from a team that is. Detroit's actually you know what I mean? So we're, just, hunt. we're operating under mm-hmm. that what J.J. said, I ain't here for a rebuild last year with the Texans. We're operating under the assumption that that offer is coming from somewhere that is probably going to have to do some things. But if you're – 
Motor City, Dan Campbell. Oh, whoa. God. You're trying to gnaw kneecaps up there and change the entire thing. Guy that has a bloody nose all over the oh, place. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a, is that a guy you go for? What up, Diggs? Shockingly, Detroit is $4 million over the cap. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you got golf. Uh, That's because you guys got golf's who contract. Who else do we have? I mean, we still got to sign Galladay. That's not going to happen. You got still playing the- Ebron. Is Prater a free agent? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think I so. Think that's the other part of the cap that the shorts use. I would love Better JJ be Watt. Better be the only good one up there at this point. I would love JJ Watt, but uh, the Lions have the worst odds to win the Super Bowl next year, so I just don't see that. <laughs> How do you have no money? Who are they paying? I don't even know. Goff. Mm-hmm. That's it. God, that's why it took three first rounders or whatever to pick yeah. that thing up because it's like, well, next year we're not even gonna be able to field a goddamn team if we do this thing. Well, and they also paid a few expatriates who haven't, you know, panned out totally yeah, those well. Those guys have stopped for Detroit. Patricia, <laughs> Patricia, the gift that yeah. keeps on giving. There's a couple, just so a couple you, guys who, who here. Who and there. Goff, twenty-eight million. Trey Flowers is twenty million. Yep. Jamie 20? Collins is twelve million. Yep. And adult. It says Prater. Prater. Jaron free Harmon, agent, by the way. I believe, is up there. Is Amendola a free agent? No, Prater. Is a free agent? Yeah. I thought so, by the way. Uh, that's oh, I thought he no. was a free agent. That's that's why oh, I was very... He's our best player. Yeah, but look for him to potentially go ring hunt, too. Prater, Ooh. has he has the longest field goal Get in NFL history. Prater. He threw a touchdown <laughs> in Lambeau. Oh. He's made a lot of money. One it's beer for the nice. entire city of city. Detroit. Is it time to go get a ring, maybe? Look, yeah. look for him to potentially go get a ring. What's the some... record for most punts in a season? Because Jack Fox oh. is about to break that for sure. <laughs> hey, Jack Fox has a massive leg. He's now. our best player now. If Prater's gone. Real yeah, golf, he... dude. <laughs> no love. No. Sorry. Wow. Fox, you're hey, right out. Hold on, though. I would like to let you know that the Detroit Lions, you know, they won the trade. But the um, – <laughs> I hated that people said that. <laughs> I was so What mad. do you mean? When we take those first round picks and pick Bro, three more tight ends? That's just such a loser's mindset. That is just such a loser's mindset. You get better at the position immediately. Mm. And like, well, yeah, but yeah, but but we didn't win the, like the Rams got better at quarterback. Okay, the the position yeah. that you have to have. They get better at quarterback. Everybody's like, yeah, but they lost. It's like, how? How? How, how is that? And they also, the, the the they put the Lions in the salary cap hell, <laughs> just like Goff had us in salary cap hell after we signed him, which, by the way, is leading to the situation in Dallas, probably, mm-hmm. with what everybody's watching over there, with what has happened here with Dak Prescott and the contract. It's just, I hate that oh, they won the trade. It's like... No, you didn't. You you didn't. You didn't win trade. Now, do you think the Rams are having any second thoughts with everything that's came out after they made that trade, like Russ Wilson or potentially Dak? Like, I, you know, I don't. I've always been a Matthew Stafford guy. Same. Like, I think, I think, I think McVay is rather okay with the yeah, guy that he's I think got. so too. I, I think he's. We got a guy. We got a guy here. You know what I mean? And, and they the would contract. never trade Russ Wilson to the Rams. Well, they're gonna have to pay him in a year. So Who's or that? let him go, Matthew. They'll be able to know, though, immediately. Yeah, yeah. Right? They'll be able to find out very quickly. Mm-hmm. Sean McVay, that offense that he you know, designs and runs and everything like that, Matthew Stafford is – he's going to fucking light it up this year, I think. He's I don't know dominate. if the Rams are going to win a Super Bowl. Now Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, they got dudes on the defensive side of the ball as well. But the Ram- – if – the, well, the same people that said that the Lions won this trade next year, if the Rams are eleven and six, twelve and five, or whatever, are they going to are they going to continue to say that the Lions won the trade? Absolutely not, right? No. That, absolutely not. No way. And the people that said that the Lions won that trade, they are people that don't think Matthew Stafford's good at football, right? Are they, is that those people? I think so. I think those people are in for quite an awakening next year. I think. Yeah, so they probably will still say that the Lions won the trade because they're all big dumb idiots. I do believe. Yeah. The people that think Matthew Stafford is not a rather large upgrade, especially with the contract situation yes. over Jared Goff, I think it's difficult for me to take those people seriously. It's like you always say. It's just people that haven't watched him. It's like when Teddy Bruschi said he wasn't tough enough to play for the Patriots. Teddy, you just haven't watched him. That's all you're telling me right now. Yeah, the guy – you know what we see from Joey Burrow this year? Mm-hmm. And we watched it very closely because it was the number one overall pick. New guy, new toy. Hey, how, let's go ahead and pay attention. Matthew Stafford gets killed uh, on a on a very regular – never on national TV. No. Nobody cares at this point because mm-hmm. it's happened for so long, and he's always been so quiet. But the throws he makes, oh, yeah. the plays that happen, it never seems to be Matthew Stafford's fault. 
Okay, just got a text from Yeah or Nay. Oh. Yeah or Nay. Oh. Okay, here we go. I sent out a text, all right, at 1.01 p.m. So literally 10 seconds before we go live this hour because the thought was like, what haven't we talked about yet? Well, we haven't talked about J.J. Watt. It was like, well, that's because we don't fucking know anything about J.J. Watt. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? Send the text right now. Then I said I was going to lead off the show with saying I just sent this text so that he potentially felt a little bit of heat, you know, if he's got this running maybe in the background uh, of whatever oh, workout yeah. he is potentially doing. You know, I, I felt to give a little, huh? huh? Come on, huh? Come, on huh? come on, come on, come on. Huh? My question was, any legit information about you out there or is everything bullshit? Okay. Okay. Just yes or no. Nothing specific. Don't need a yes and. Just a yes or a no. Okay. I, 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 you don't need to tell me. I'm not an insider. I don't want to know. Nope. I just need to know what I should be. Can I talk about anything that's out there as if it was factual so that this doesn't, you know, come back to bite me in the complete ass in like three weeks from now when we're in a very different set of circumstances and people say this aged well, well, we're living in the moment. This is a daily show. Okay, what the fuck? Get off me. Come on. He has responded. Oh. Mr. What says <laughs> neither I nor my agents speak to anyone, period. Parenthesis, besides teams, obviously. Yes. Parenthesis on the other side. So the information then that Diana Rossini was reporting came from the team that probably offered Ooh. JJ Watt this thing. Oh. So nothing we are hearing is coming out from JJ potentially t trying to paint a narrative. The information we are hearing, now he could be Hey, I could be a part of this, this whole bullshit, you know, no, the do that. I, I, I don't know if he would. I don't know if he would. Good I'm, guy. I mean, he, he is good guy. He's Great J.J. Guy. What? 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 He's J.J. What? What? He's big guy. What? St. Houston. What? Had nosebleed. What? what? Tackles people. What? Hey, he does this little dance thing. What? what? Wouldn't storm out of a meeting. What? what? He actually did potentially allegedly a storm coup. into a coup, <laughs> but uh, we don't know if that's true. He did just say to me though, that he nor his agents speak to no one. Huh. All right. Except for teams, obviously. Yeah, maybe his brothers. Who's offering that money? Well, the team is proud of it, by the way. They're telling, oh, yeah. they're telling Diana like, oh, hey, we were in it. Hey, we are in it. We offered him 15.5 million. A year. It might be New England. It might that. be. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we pay, guys. We offered one fifteen and a half mil. Hey, shout out JJ, man. So now, JJ. now we can know if what he just said was true, that the information you're hearing about JJ is coming from teams. So what are? Now we have to ask Diana. Well, she will never. <laughs> Excuse uh, me, Diana. Uh, Diana, what team? What team was there? <laughs> Which, by the way, that's that's why I don't want to be an insider. Is because I couldn't do that. Because as soon as somebody said, "Who'd you hear that from?" I'm like, JJ. Yeah. <laughs> he, actually, he actually, he actually told me. Yeah. Uh, I'll screen. You want me to? <laughs> but the insiders, they have to protect their people. So we just have to know what the information. There's always a reason the information's coming out. This particular information's coming from probably teams as opposed to JJ and his guy. We know what team it was. We know it was the Cleveland Browns. So then they can say, "Hey, look." We came out and we offered this guy all this money, but he didn't want to come live in this dump. He didn't want to come here. Oh, jeez. Oh, the Browns are an intriguing thing. Jeff. Especially with Miles Garrett putting out that uh, and one mixtape mm -hmm. uh, video last night. Balling. 64270, they're saying, whatever he is. And he's just flying around in a basketball. Yoked. Uh, yoked, jacked. Jeez. I mean, he looked unbelievable. I mean, he looked unbelievable great football player you hey, come join miles garrett is what cleveland brown said and we'll pay you handsomely come down come come Travel. by the lake we got a good casino downtown oh. hey that casino pays yeah, oh yeah hey that casino pays down there doesn't it, it does pay it was a good casino it was trash great casino. and you know, travels empty license plates and all wow. that type of stuff just sitting on the road right in indianapolis no in cleveland but hey come on. i think that's place. potentially oh, everything yeah outside the casino was an apocalyptic hellscape yeah. but inside it was pretty nice very very large. It had a low ceiling on that one level. It had like four <laughs> levels. Was the river on fire while you guys were? Huh? Was the river on fire while you guys were? Well, you said oh. apocalyptic hell. It, it, it was pretty close. Scary. It was pretty yeah. close. Well, they already tried to play clowny last year, so why wouldn't they try and pay what? Yeah, well, Andrew Barry, though, right? I feel like they built that team rather yeah. well at this point. Now, I... I don't know if they pay him 15 to 16 million, you think? What they, they offer clowny? 13, they said. Oh, yeah, it was a one that. year, right? It was a no, one year. No, they offered multiple years. 
No, remember. Didn't didn't Chucky Robinson tell us two or three years? Yeah, but then we had a source oh, that man. told us that it wasn't a. It was. I think they potentially did do a one year thing, but we had a source that we heard from that said it was not this grand big offer. Seventeen to eighteen mil per year for Jadavian. Yeah, that was the report or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah turns Which, out- by the way, that led to me sending a text message as well. It's like. Is this what we're doing right now? Is this real? I'd like to talk about it. What's he going to get this That's, year? Five? Who? Clowney? Three. That was the whole thing with the Titans. Wasn't Clowney just chilling, though, there for a bit, right? Clowney was just chilling there for a little bit. Last shape. off season, you mean? Yeah, he just... And then he chilled during the season. Yeah, he doesn't even practice. He didn't practice with the Seahawks because he was hurt. I don't think he practiced with the Titans all year. I'm intrigued. I'd like to meet him. I've never met him. I've always been, obviously, massive fan just because I enjoy... Um, People that can do things and stuff that nobody else can. Yeah. And Clowney there for a while was maybe he was probably the human we would send if we had to get into a fight with another species there for probably a good three, four, five years there. It's Mm -hmm. like, oh, this is the human in its most athletic form this mm-hmm. is the because remember the shit he used to he was what six six or something like how how big and then he was 260 he was what was his his stat and then coming out of south carolina that michigan i mean there's oh, just yeah. you could just stick his arm out it was so oh long. it was awesome he signed like a hundred million four. dollar puma deal before he even played i think i mean it was like hey this is gonna be this is gonna be a thing and he never got as many sacks down there in houston Right, but everybody's like he is a game disruptor though yeah. because he is he's eating he's eating he's he's doing his thing and then kind of as it went on it never really felt like what it was gonna be is end up being what it was I wonder why I'd like to talk to him a little bit yeah he was six four and a half two sixty six I believe at the combine which pretty similar to Miles Garrett what do you run a four, six, four 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 five say, say what you said again uh six four and a half two sixty six okay so we got to remember that whenever just like miles i'm not saying any differently than miles garrett but in the nfl they're trying to make people as small as possible so whenever you line up to get measured they're pushing your arms down your your head has to be in an exact thing they want everybody measured at the same exact protocol we want to know exactly how tall everybody is the nba for instance i do believe they measure with shoes on yeah, and imagine if i came in with the hoka what oh, <laughs> oh, Six eight. <laughs> and I would, they would have me at six three. Uh, <laughs> Say maybe six four with these things. The camera doesn't do justice of how awesome there it is. Yeah. Have you ever seen the Irishman with Robert De Niro? Bro, these are the Hoka ones. <laughs> exactly the behind the scenes. Bro, I got some platforms on this thing. Oh shit. Walking on pillows. Anyways, that's like what the NBA shit. though. Yeah. The <laughs> NBA will have them like like stand with shoes on uh-huh. so that they can have the guys be as tall as possible because it's great marketing for them. Like, hey, we got this six foot eleven guy uh, taking on a guy that's six foot uh, ten, and then there's this uh, five foot thirteen guy that's <laughs> yeah. coming. Like, there's just you know, there's always some mathematician is going to come after me for that, but there's always some like marketing angle to the size wrestling same thing like yeah. hey put your boots on let's go ahead and get you there uh what are you walking around at is what we would like to tell people the nfl is like nah 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 get your ass we want to see you as small as you can be because everybody's doing we have a protocol here shoulders down <laughs> head back and they're like this is where you're at i'm like i don't think i've ever been this tall in my life well you were probably a few years ago and here you are back it's like it's a very interesting thing the way the NFL operates. So he's 6'5", as is Miles Garrett, at least 6'5 and a half. I'm surprised that NBA players don't get measured in the Hoka ones or try to find an old pair of shocks and get measured in those, too. Ooh, or the yeah. Skechers uh, shape-ups. Shape yeah. That's what these – I almost fell off these things. Yeah. <laughs> I put them on and I almost fell off on them back. I miss shots. Well, it does feel like you're walking on a bed, which people say is nice for the joints. Yeah. It's uncomfortable though over there for a little bit because it feels like you got your sea legs out there. I was yeah, walking man. with these things. You got to do like the full heel toe walk thing. You got to break them in. Like a Just temper pee pee it Yeah. I'm a big shoe guy too. People know I'm a big shoe guy. Huge shoe. Why guy. am I wearing these shoes? Let me tell you why I'm wearing huh. these shoes. These shoes. These shoes. They got juice. Uh, we're on AQ Shipley's feet. Oh. Uh, the night of the Super Bowl, and he posted a photo on the field, uh, celebrating afterwards, and the only thing I could notice was his ridiculous fucking shoes he had on. <laughs> I actually zoomed in. I said, hey, congrats on the Super Bowl, bub. 
but what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> he FaceTimes me back as soon as I go that. He goes, oh, I bet you won't be making fun of those shoes in a second. And I was like, what's that? He goes, saw Tom wearing these. Whoa. <laughs> so TB12 owns a pair of these. I don't know if he wears them or not, but AQ saw him, and he was like, oh, I need to get those clouds on my feet. AQ owns three pairs of these. I now own four of them. Yeah, this is supposed to make me a better athlete, I think. My okay. knees feel better. Yeah, I'll tell you what, though. It is uncomfortable to be walking on three to four inches of platforms <laughs> whenever you're out there out and about. Hey, these cocaine whites, though, are not too shabby, uh, huh? Uh-uh. No, it was Hoka Cocos. Very nice. <laughs> don't the roll an ankle. Cocaine? What'd you say? I said just don't roll an ankle. You can roll an ankle. No. Right, I, must, I fell off. Yeah. I fell back <laughs> on these things because, you know. Get a little bit off balance. How you doing? Keep it moving. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am really tall with it. If I was to, yeah. they might have put me at six That's four. A, oh. Jesus, <laughs> the Hocus! No, no, too much power. Too much power. They're <laughs> so powerful. <laughs> That's why you so wear these. <laughs> Have you seen it? Yeah. I knock down things I wasn't even looking at. <laughs> They're powerful. Good that, data. That pitcher's been living a dangerous life. AJ almost hit it with a hockey stick well, 20 I times. Mean, AJ. What did it Those do? shoes with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> oh, no. You broke the entire... Wait till you see the gift that comes from that video. <laughs> the jersey, though. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. Oh, the glasses <laughs> everywhere. Oh, good God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good God. Uh, be, some duct table fixed it. <laughs> and now you can sign it. Now now you can sign it. Sign. We were wondering if I was ever going to be able to potentially get in there and write a little note to me on her. That was the old emergency break glass if you need it. We did. Oh, jeez. All right. <laughs> With those shoes, at least you can get a uh, you know a new top shot of you dunking in those things. Oh, oh, there it is. Son of a bitch. Okay. Hell yeah. That's sharp. Oh, jeez. Don't get blood on it. That's what happens though whenever you start walking on these clouds. Yeah. <laughs> you don't got to worry about stepping on like glass. I feel like I have to say this. <laughs> I have to say this. Mitt, don't try to just pick it up with your bare hands. Very smart. Very yeah. smart. Yeah. Mitt is Wet gonna... towel. Oh, glass. <laughs> it's not real. Wait. Oh. I can cut this... my hand on glass? This is just the glass they put in the locker room so they don't spit on it. <laughs> the hockey glass. It's not real. It's not real. <laughs> it is real glass. I almost just cut my shit right there. <laughs> So what happens when you start wearing uh, these shoes, though? So in the chat, AQ said, won a Super Bowl in those things. Yeah. AQ won a Super Bowl in these things. Look at that. Zoom in on those things. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh oh. Oh. Show uh -oh. some. Uh... We're clear. Yeah. All right. Didn't you got to drag it out of the old messenger. Yeah, it was. Oh, oh, oh Jay. Snippy. Jay told you to go fuck yourself. I heard it. Oh, <laughs> there they are. <laughs> Look at those things, Damn. dude. Look at those shoes. The whites are the better Hoka than Cocos the greens. The are better than Yeah, the Coca-Cola. Yeah. The coca -hucka. The coca -hucka ones. I got four different pairs. These ones are just for uh, walking. I got some Iron Man ones as well. Ooh. Yeah, and then a recovery pair of flip-flops. You know you're supposed to wear? Turns out these are very expensive shoes. And I would not recommend buying them. But I, <laughs> well, I mean, things are happening. Guys win Super Bowls. Glass gets broken down, you know, there's a lot of shit that's popping off. Yeah, you want to be a champion, then maybe go out and buy yourself a pair. I just rewatched you falling. Oh, that was <laughs> your face just it's turns bad. right away. It's very slow, too. It was, yeah. <laughs> took a bang off the wall, <laughs> took a bang off the barrel, and then it fucking tipped over. It's the hocus, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's the hocus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be back on the other side. Uh, that's probably not good radio or TV there, me reacting to something that just happened without anybody else being able to see it. Uh, we'll take some phone calls on the other side. Hell yeah. JJ Watt says what? his team ain't talking to anybody. What? 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 All right, I'm asked to follow up about the tweets. Nice. Is there any? Probably won't answer that one. Well, then what's the number then, JJ? This is the Pat McAfee Show. <laughs> Travis called heads. No! Sorry. You're not sorry. 
I, I'm sorry that it worked out this way, but I told you. You're not I had sorry. To trust my instincts. You asked me what I thought. I thought it was going to be heads. Damn, yeah. I didn't what about Travis Kelsey I didn't know going you out put there? 30k on it. Yeah, I mean, was that the cleanest toss of all time? No, it was Great. terrible. But it, that thing took one bang straight in. What a horse shit toss. They watered, they watered the field. Old Notre Dame versus USC. They raised the grass. And... <laughs> you son of a bitch. We all know that wasn't a fair coin toss. No, it was They not. should redo it. It was a lot worse than 50-50 after fucking watching that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say that's why you don't bet 30000 on a coin toss. You know? <laughs> seems, like, seems like a reasonable thing to bet thirty k on. <laughs> Cause you got no control. <laughs> you got no control God, so I guess not even like a thought to go into it. Well, Christmas is canceled. <laughs> yeah, we're giving away a lot, but no, nowhere near as much as we once had thought. No, no. Remember that double seventy k? Take it back. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Fanduel just made so much money right there. Uh, Use. Mr. Aaron Rogers. Yeah. 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 the bye week you weren't allowed to leave you weren't allowed to do anything what did you do i didn't do anything <laughs> i had the COVID test every morning just like all of our guys make sure you vote listen if you don't vote not have an aaron Rodgers tuesday ever again okay make sure you vote first tuesday in november right so we're just gonna skip the show no, 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 no. did you watch anything like maybe ted lasso during the bye week to help that entire thing out i didn't watch ted lasso oh. <laughs> Jesus. Come on! Unbelievable! Don't vote, Aaron. Out. Hey, don't vote. You know, we had a tent in uh, in nature, just uh, camping on my own property. You camped out on your own property during the bye week? Yeah, I'm kidding about that. Oh <laughs> my! Did you really wear number forty at West Virginia? Yeah, it was my uh, GPA, and my favorite drink. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You are wearing shorts. Yeah, yeah. Come on, bro. Oh. Pat doesn't believe me that they don't give Toradol shots there. They don't. Yeah, they don't give Toradol shots. But Age would drink this this green legume drink that I'm sure was legal, but it made his body just, I mean, he had the worst gas you could find. Uh, <laughs> How do you maintain that high level for so long? Is it like super competitive? Like you have to be a, an ultra competitive human being to be a quarterback? Well, I think it starts to being hyper competitive. You know, I, I think that's a, a trait with all the, all the long time uh, great players is you just have, uh, I just, I love to compete. I think the most important thing is you have to be self-motivated. And again, that's, that may seem like a, you know, standard statement, but it's not. I mean, not every player is self-motivated. Hey, how's Jordan Love doing? We don't hear much about him. You know, this is a good time for him uh, to learn, to see what it looks like, to see what the week's preparation look like, and just kind of soak it all up. And does that change where you throw the ball to people if they're more of a body catcher or hands catcher or anything like that? You know, any, anybody that catches the ball with their hands it just changes the whole catch rate. It changes the whole confidence you have in throwing them. But anybody that naturally catches the ball in their hands probably gets a few more looks. I, I would say this, there's places that I would like to go in the future. Uh, and one of them is Egypt. Ooh. When were the pyramids in, in the Sphinx, when were they constructed? <laughs> also, like what kind of technology did they use? It was aliens. Say it. Yeah, it was definitely aliens. Bingo. Whoa. Yeah, there it is, by the way. This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. You ready? <laughs> one, two, one, two, three. Bring the bass in. Oh, man. Mark Maxwell Jr., Indianapolis guy. Oh, yeah. Bring the bass in. We need more fuck up in here. He's so talented, like, he's gonna grow so fast, we're gonna start getting copyright strikes right now. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Welcome back. Um, it's time to spoil the shit out of your dog with Bark Box, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Two yeah. toys, two treats, and a chew. It starts as low as $23 a month for $60 worth of dog chews and toys. It's the best day of the month for our dogs whenever the Bark Box arrives. Isn't that right? How's Bingo doing? Bro? Oh, man, he's doing great. He actually is 18 pounds now. Oh, yeah, he's going to be a big boy. God. Oh, Bingo. Oh, uh, he loves his Bark Box. That's hey, a Bingo. I'll tell you what, any day that, that's a Bingo. The uh, anytime 
the bark box arrives, your dogs are so smart, right? We got COVID sniffing dogs at this point, mm -hmm. which by the way, let's get a bunch of them. Maybe make bingo one that would help yes, out everybody. Perhaps. That'd be great. But dogs are so smart. They know when the bark box arrives, they know their life's getting better. It should, it, and they almost know when it's coming. Like they expect like, oh, it's been how many suns have come up? Okay, it feels like now is the time that a bark box should show up there or whatever. Tails wag, ears go up, nose get going. The bark box makes you look like a hero to your canine once a month and you just set it and forget it. Mm -hmm. Shows up every single month. A couple bark, I mean, it is, this is a genius idea. Uh, I know Bingo's just getting into it. Oh yeah, Young. he's already sitting when I bring the box and he knows. And if you join now, you get an extra toy in every single box for free. That's $60 worth of toys for the first year for free whenever you sign up at BarkBox.com forward slash Pat. Tailored toys and treats ship free every single month. Start now and get $60 in free toys, unique toys, USA made treats, free monthly delivery, and $60 in free extra toys this year when you go to BarkBox box.com forward slash pat everything's getting delivered to the house everything nowadays mm -hmm. get your dog treat your dog chew your dog toy get it sent to the house without you even having to do it every single month my dogs love it nothing better seven deer were eating at my house yesterday you guys see that? that oh yeah Right Seven. Up front. That was insane. And then the squirrel, by the way, just came just running in around. there. Didn't even really care. Yeah, yeah. Was that what? 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 It wasn't me. You just made a bolt action rifle sound. I believe. <laughs> it sure sounded like it. Double barrel. Or, or was it a pump? Uh, I don't. I don't think I feed your family for the whole winter. Uh oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> if everything goes to shit, okay, we will have the fireplace in the house at least, and we will have potentially a plethora of animals outside if everything goes to the purge. Um, but <laughs> the deer, the deer stay. Those are our outdoor pets, seven of them. Yeah. And they're only going to recreate or to procreate probably coming up. Oh, yeah. So there's this summer should be a nice 15, maybe 20 Man, deer. Does coyotes mess with the deer? I was gonna say. Well, the coyote comes only comes around like once or twice a year. It's like the big oh, bad wolf comes to town. Everybody yeah. gets real quiet. Everybody gets real quiet. You don't see any raccoons. You don't see any fox. You don't see any deer. You damn near don't even see anything out there because the coyote is oh. just a ratchet savage roaming the streets and howling all over the place. It's almost as if your house is now the safe haven for these What's up, Dix? What do we got? Uh, Seahawks, this is from Adam Schefter. Ooh. Oh, Seahawks. So, so cool. Schefter, by the way, okay. Schefter, OG, in the game, plugged in with everybody. Seahawks say? Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson has not demanded to trade his agent Mark Rogers. Uh, told ESPN, Wilson has told the Seahawks he wants to play in Seattle, but if a trade were considered, the only teams he would go to are the Cowboys, Saints, Raiders, and Bears. Okay, yeah, so right now, right now. I never liked him. Whoa. Okay, so Mark <laughs> Rogers told ESPN um, that Russell Wilson has never demanded a trade, which is interesting because Team 3, which Mark Rogers would allegedly be a part of, you would think, his agent would be a part of the team that is representing russell wilson says we have never demanded a trade but but seattle if you guys are thinking about it hey if y'all motherfuckers are thinking about moving on dallas new orleans las vegas chicago are places and you heard gumpy say he never liked them that's because the dolphins were allegedly <laughs> and the jets were allegedly a part of this just this morning was some breaking news from team three allegedly now mark rogers clears it up like hey we're not the one asking for this russell's not asking for this but he did storm potentially out of a meeting. There are yeah. some troubles potentially brewing behind the scenes. And if they were thinking about trading him, Cowboys, Saints, Raiders, Bears. Okay, so Mark Rogers clears that up with Adam Schefter. Any information that comes out from Adam Schefter about Russell Wilson, now we know exactly who it's coming from probably, even though he, I would assume, is also dialed into the Seahawks organization. That's a big deal. Bye-bye Miami. Ain't even thinking about it. Dak Prescott, Dallas, Jerry. I don't know how they'll have the money to afford it, but Jerry Jones now is potentially in a position to reach. That was Mark Rogers telling Dallas. Yeah. Chicago, Las Vegas, and New Orleans. Like, hey, we haven't asked for a trade, but if you guys would like to give a call up here to get us out, we would be 
more than welcome with it. You're going to have to convince the Seahawks for that, though. Very interesting technique here. This continues to be Team 3 making decisions and moves for Russell Wilson. It is interesting to think of Russell Wilson with Sean Payton. It is interesting to think of Russell Wilson with John Gruden. It is not interesting to think of Russell Wilson with Matt Nagy, but I'll tell you what. Russell Wilson for the Dallas fucking Cowboys, oh, yes. national television every single weekend. Oh, my God. Go, boys. Go, oh, <laughs> go, boys. Saints, I mean, they're $100 million under the cap. How could they ever afford yeah. Russell Wilson unless they sell the entire team? Over the cap. Over, over the cap, excuse me. <laughs> they I, I can't don't, have that. I, I, don't, I don't understand the over-under. I always thought if you were plus. <laughs> you think you got no protection in Seattle? Wait till you get to Chicago, pal. Yeah, yeah well, like, I don't know why Chicago's in there. I guess he must love the city of Chicago. Why? Yeah, it's a beautiful city, good defense. Why not? Sarah plays soccer there. <laughs> All right, so let's get some phone calls. <laughs> Dallas, though. <laughs> Dallas. Dallas. That's it. Come on. That has to be it. Now, now listen, it's going to be interesting to hear the people that are big Dak Prescott fans, you know, talking about this now because it sounds like uh, Team 3 is potentially saying, like, see, you guys potentially got a little bit of uh, trouble brewing down there. Come on and get us, please, up here in Seattle. You're going to have to convince Pete Carroll and the boys, though. What's up, Dick? So, Dak's contract, or if Dak gets a uh, franchise, it's what, 37, 38 million? 37, yeah. Russ is due 32 this upcoming season, and then 37 and 40. So, he might actually be cheaper than Dak. If... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and if you're the Seahawks, you have to consider getting Dak back in a couple firsts. No, yeah. you, you think then they would oh, have to pay sign it, sign, franchise sign and franchise and trade, so they're going to be $37 million. If you're already paying 32, okay. Okay, you get a quarterback, and you're getting uh, five more million dollars, and you're getting a couple probably ones. I would assume a one, at least one, two probably. Mm -hmm. uh, now we can definitely state that any information that was coming out about how many ones it would take to start the conversation is all bullshit. That yeah. was uh, that was mostly all bullshit. But maybe that is what they're thinking. If you get Dak franchise tag, thirty-seven million, five million more than what you're going to pay Russ, and you get two first rounders with that, that's basically what Mark Rogers was just saying. Mark Rogers was like, listen, we haven't demanded this, but if you go ahead and try, we're listening. Wow, him in Dallas. Oh, my God. Him and Sierra's, what, Sierra's from Texas? Yeah. Uh -huh. Sierra's from Texas. The Dallas Cowboys are on national television every single week. Jerry Jones talking about, next to Russell Wilson for whatever. Walter Payton, man of the year, is now the Cowboys. Oh, my God, Jerry Jones. I can already see him putting up billboards. Mm -hmm. Listen, we got not only the best guy, we got the nicest guy. We thought we had nice guys in the past. We got the nicest guy. Number one. He's a guy that makes plays. We got an offensive line for him. Remember, I paid everybody mm -hmm. except for the last quarterback, and you guys called me crazy. Look what we fucking got now. That would be wild. The Dak Prescott camp, I'm intrigued to see how they play this. Because here's a quarterback that wants to get to Dallas, who is very, 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 very good and established. And he's less than what Dak would probably cost. That kind of puts Dak in a terrible position, which a lot of people will say, Russell Wilson being a real fuckboy for that. But it's the way the game is played, I guess. Well, and is Dak Prescott going to want to do another tag and trade? Like, he doesn't want to do a tag to begin with, so how are they going to work that into a trade somehow? Is there a chance that somebody jumped on a roof right there? Yeah. I, don't know if I heard was, that. Yeah. Oh, you don't have headphones on. You probably hear better. Yeah, I heard yeah. a lot better. Yeah. I, <laughs> by the way, it blew up my ears a couple of, a couple of days ago, so it's been tough to kind of want to jump right back into the ear thing. Yeah. But It sure sounds like I it, did. It, I think somebody's on a roof. Well, somebody falls off the roof. <laughs> roof, 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 roof. Name that movie. Uh, what if I fall off the roof? Santa Claus. Did not. Comet gets him uh, the rope. Yeah. Uh, because no spoiler alerts or anything, but good character. He killed Santa because he scared him off the roof and he fell and died. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And that's why Tim Allen became. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Scott Calvin be became Santa Claus. He never wanted to die. So ipso facto, if you walk outside, you become Santa Claus. If that fat jolly fucks up there right now which it sounded like <laughs> which it sounded like he that potentially was i mean why does something always happen doesn't it feel like shit is always happening here oh yeah, oh, yeah. It, what was it two days ago they were running like a uh, one of those red bull uh where they run with the um the fake plane things off the top uh, of the like carts uh, they were running like the fluke talk. what's that the fluke talk yeah they were running the fluke talk right out here yeah. a bunch of people somehow i don't even know how that's uh the pro then we got people remember earlier in the quarantine just dancing up here oh, yeah. remember just dancing up here running around the here. rapper sirens every day by the way we he made a banger for us that 
we should play that guy good rapper by the way made up with that guy wasn't happy with him but then you you sirens every day yeah. what the fuck are we in the most just busy place in the history of the world here the meth um method uh, what's that called meth clinic. clinic yeah by the way i had to think back to kid rock you know, this is for a, uh, uh, and a methadone clinic or whatever. That's that's how I got to that, by the way. It's right over there. It seems like that thing has almost gone out of business now at this point. But everything else has picked up dramatically. Yeah, down I mean, me and Gumpy saw a homeless guy post dump walking around town yeah, with his around pants his around. His yeah, it was insane. Indy is wild. Indy, Indy has become a very interesting city. That's why earlier, whenever you were like, oh, Cleveland, you got a blah, blah, blah industry. It was like, huh. Uh, you're in a city right now that potentially has that same thing going on. It's a wild time out there. What's that, Diggs? Nothing. What are you going to say? Nothing. Tony. Oh, look at that. Come on, Tony. Tony. Let's hit some... Uh, have we already taken a break? We have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get some friends. Let's go to Dominic in Illinois. What's going on, Dom? What's going on, uh, boys? Shout out to Pat and the boys. AJ, I don't know if he's on yet, but... Uh... I'm from Joliet, Illinois, and I want to give a shout out to my high school where I coach and all that, playing for the Central. I want to talk to you about some stuff that's going on in the NFL. Like you said, mentioned yesterday about the NFLPA, about how they, uh, you know, they're not really taking care of their retired players. But when I look at it, the NFL, you, who made the league, you look at these names, all these names you're saying aren't getting taken care of. And, and that's honestly shocking to me because they, they made the league. That was where they're from. And then you got the Steelers. They need to draft a wide receiver because – yeah, they got Johnson, but they need a true number one. Claypool, he's going to be good. I wasn't but uh, he's not there right? yet. Did I miss something? You, know, you maybe got Bears with Derek Carr, uh, Derek Carr. Maybe they get another trade going on with the Raiders. See what happens with Derek Carr. You got maybe even Dak. Maybe Dak to the Bears because the Cowboys don't want Dak. They just keep it on to him. And my problem with Deshaun Watson situation is why are they going to keep a disgruntled player? Yeah. What's the point of oh, yeah. keeping a disgruntled player on the roster Shema. if he's not going to want to play regardless, no matter if you're paying him this amount of money or not? That was it? Shout yeah. out, Dominic. That was all wow. he had. Shout out, Dominic. Dude. He did the whole show. Wow. I like Dom. Dom's Good got Dom. takes. Thank you, Dom. Let's go to Raul in California. What's going on, Raul? Hey, Pat. I just want to talk about – hey, Pat and the boys. I just want to talk about the running back situation in uh, Indianapolis. Um. Is Marlon Mack still our guy or is he not? I'm sorry, man. I'm using some in and out. <laughs> nice. What a fucking goal. Hey, do what you got to do, man. Do what you got to do. Uh, the running back situation in Indianapolis is a good one. Jonathan Taylor, Marlon Mack. Uh, I, I think Marlon Mack got hurt last year, right? Is that yep. when Jonathan Killies, Taylor started? Right? Get, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was bad. I think it was non-contact, if I yeah. do recall. Uh, I don't know how the recovery or rehab is going for him, but whenever, what's that? He's a free agent. Marlon Mack is. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Taylor is going to be the bell cow. And I think if you're a Colts fan after watching last season, you're pretty pumped up about that. Mm -hmm. Th that dude is a – he's a guy. Now, the guy playing quarterback directly in front of him mm. is probably going to be pretty thankful for that guy as well. If I'm Frank Reich, I am letting Carson Wentz know that this entire team is not going to be sitting on your shoulders every single week. The Eagles were there, right? Like two years ago, end of the season, he was playing with Connor at uh, tight end, oh, I think. Yeah. Gumpy was offensive line, I think. Like he And they were winning games and almost like, – that was when he was balling. And that's what everybody's referring to, by the way, whenever they're like – Carson was – last year, it felt like he felt that pressure almost or after the Jalen Hurts thing happened, he got completely broken, lost his confidence or whatever. If you're Frank Reich, you do whatever you got to do. You have a great relationship with this guy. You're being talked about as being able to put CPR and save his own bitch, his football career, basically. Um, but Jonathan Taylor is becoming – I mean, we are doing this a lot, or this a lot to Jonathan Taylor. And then if you get a couple other weapons, which you have the money to do so, then it makes it a lot easier for Carson. Remember, Tom Brady this year with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers early, they were not running the ball at all. And whenever they did a play action, it looked nothing like their actual run, so it wasn't a play action. It was just a uh, arbitrary fake handoff that no linebacker bid on. Once they started running the rock for real and they kind of started meshing, that offense started coming together, all those throws became a lot easier for Tom. A running back is a quarterback's best friend, no matter 
how much your team throws. A running back is vital. In Indianapolis, they got a guy. Hopefully, Marlon Mack will be able to come back. Um, and maybe that'll be why Carson Wentz does have success this year. It's because of JT. Yeah, but forget about the running back. They need to figure out wide receiver. They either got to bring back T.Y. or even add another after at re-adding T.I. There's some people There's some people saying on the internet, I saw this, that T.Y. Hilton isn't a good quarterback anymore or whatever, or a good wide receiver anymore. Um, I beg to differ. He's had three different quarterbacks in the last three seasons. Um, this particular year, they had him like double, triple coverage basically on every single play. He was just running distraction routes basically all season. By the way, did not complain at all. Was not coming out and complaining about that at all. Uh, started catching, uh, started getting the rock a lot later in the season and going. T.Y. Hilton's going to go somewhere and be very good. Uh, look for him to probably go to Tampa, to be honest Whoa. with you. Look for T.Y. to probably go to Tampa. I think Bruce Arians was the reason we drafted T.Y. Hilton. If, the, if I do recall, we were looking to draft somebody else. The story goes. We were looking to draft somebody. This is not, I was not in the war room. This is from somebody who allegedly was in draft war room. The story goes that right before our pick, somebody selected who we were going to lock in. Then as the clock was going, we were thinking about trading or moving. And Bruce Arians said, uh, there's this. There's this wide receiver down in Florida. He is a guy. Draft him. That's all she wrote. Andrew Luck, T.Y. Hilton become this tag team. Just like we got uh, Vic Ballard, that draft class as well, Ooh. out of Mississippi State. He had a non-contact practice injury that kind of ended his career. He was unbelievable. Look for T.Y., though, to probably end up heading down there to Tampa because that whole staff knows him, that whole staff likes him, and that whole staff understands, like, hey, this dude – is still a dude if we have by the way with mike evans on the other side that helps him out a lot tremendously and i think ty would even tell you that and he's already been paid a couple times got a couple good chains mm -hmm. ty's got a couple real nice chains what was that <laughs> stat you just put up there <clears throat> ty hilton is just 640 receiving yards away from 10,000 in his career if he can reach that mark with the colts it would become the first franchise in nfl history to have three different players with 10,000 receiving mm -hmm. yards here's the company he's in by the way uh marvin harrison reggie wayne ty hilton uh so, and he's had three different qbs the last three years that's via josh wilson of stampede blue i believe is what sb is mm. at josh wilson Shut sb up. uh one more phone call here before the end of the hour let's go to lucas in colorado what's going on He just oh, ah. he hung up as soon as as soon as we answered. Stage fright happens to the best of us. Been there. Does that happen on a call? You think Gump? I guess you would know. Gump started as a caller. Now he works here full time. Oh what? shit! Oh shit! I was uh, <laughs> yeah, I was shaking like a leaf the first time I called in. When you're just kind of sitting in queue. <laughs> yeah. You also call him Dump too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I went on a pretty pretty good run i think i said fair your boat about 17 times ah, that's all right you had good energy the big thing is like we're not expecting a home run to be hit because no, no. i don't ever do that like yeah. that's not just if you bring good energy you know i think that's a good thing but i don't really often think about how there's potential nerves over there i i, I think it's like uh because i used to call into shows and i used yeah. to you know like enjoy them like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah here we go let's have a good time because nobody's ever gonna see said face yeah this is basically a this is a uh a burner account basically yeah. Go in there. That's why I always think like why. But I can see how you could potentially get nervous knowing that there's maybe some people listening. Um, I don't know if you're still in this or not, but Dana White tweeted, "You guys have to check this out and make it part of your workout. It will blow your mind." And no, I was not paid to post this. Thrill the fight, Oculus. Whoa. Are you and Dana? Dana, listen. I've knocked out every character in there. At every different class, I'm going back <laughs> through left-handed at this point. Now, I did take a week and a half, two-week break, and I've been binging food and everything, edibles, vitamins. So I had two matches last night. Uh, I, I was continuing my left-handed run. Ooh. I was in endurance, and I'll tell you what. I did lose last night. Oh, no. I did lose. Lefty, I'm fighting Southpaw. Now. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to go back through as a Southpaw. I, 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 I lost last night after a two-week hiatus. They got me into the third round. They asked me to come into the deeper waters a little bit. And I'll tell you what, those hands, those hands were mm -hmm. down. <laughs> Dana White is 100% right. I've been saying this for a long time. Throw the fight in the Oculus is a fucking beast of a workout. And it's very quick. 
You only need five to six, seven minutes. It's great cardio. It burns you out. But once you start getting, you know, your face beat up like bongos, it is a little bit of a tough feeling to look in the mirror and see that. So I respect the fact that Dana White's in there. He's former boxing trainer, by the way. That's how Dana White first was a boxing trainer. I've been reading the reviews. They say it is like real boxing. That's good to know that in Oculus boxing, it's like real boxing. I don't have to actually box now. I know that I'd probably be pretty good without getting punched in the face. It's goodness. Well, if Dana wants to, you know, get in the ring, we got one in the office. So you guys can stand at each corner <laughs> and just go at it. Now, Thrill the Fight allegedly releasing a update yeah. and it will be allowed to have multiplayer so you'll be able to fight other people Here we go. <laughs> but they're wow. not there yet uh that's going to be difficult to get the physics accurate because yeah. i mean the internet and everything you fighting the fake is is enough and by the way my left <laughs> also pretty good hour two wrapping up we'll have aj hawk on the other side ian rapaport will be joining us Woo. in the third hour as well plus more of your phone calls one 888 mad dog you got about six minutes we'll see you on the other side i was told by del curry scotty pippen struggles on a golf course right right I was told at that thing that I'm going against Scotty Pippen the next day, match play, heads up, one on one Scotty Pippen. So we decide, like, okay, we probably have a couple of drinks, stay at the casino a little <laughs> bit longer than we should. Representing the NFL out of the shoeless golf club of America, Pat McAfee. His opponent representing the NBA, Scotty Pippen. <laughs> You know what I mean? This guy's got six rings. Yeah. He's a fucking Hall of Famer. <laughs> but today he's going to play against me. And then I start seeing Scotty hit some shots that are just like starting to come together. And I'm like, wait a fucking minute. I think I was lied to. <laughs> we were lied to yesterday. We were told Scotty Pippen was a terrible golfer. Probably Scotty fucking Pippen. Going in the back nine, I think I was down one. Like we were really, like we were battling. But I started making putts. And Scotty Pippen went ahead and got real hot. I mean, <laughs> real fucking hot. I was down three with seven left. And I looked right in the camera, and I go, "Start down three, with like seven holes left. Scotty Pippen's about to get this work. Scotty Pippen from 190 yards out just fucking dunks it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking boom, bang, and then walks up to the green, gets the ball, cameras on him, and he goes, Pippen ain't easy. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh. Down four with six left after Scotty Pippen just chips him from fucking 400 yards out. <laughs> I was fucking demoralized. Uh, Pippin yeah. ain't easy. By the way, best he's ever performed at golf because I'm around. Better teammate than Jordan. Yep. People forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I told Dell. Oh, I was yeah. like, Dell, what the fuck you lying to me? He was like, well, I saw it yesterday. He was not great. And Greg Anthony told me. And I was like, Dell, he buried me, Del Curry. <laughs> he buried me. He was like, hey, Pippin ain't easy. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, baby, it's time to celebrate. Talking about a shotgun of beer after he had beat me, obviously. I, I like teach him how to do it. Yeah, put a hole in there. It might spray a little bit, so. Yeah, yeah, so you're going to go here, and then you're going to open and flip up. Does that make sense? Congrats on winning the NBA a couple of times. Blah, 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 blah. And being an incredible golfer. <laughs> Cheers. Appreciate it. Hey. Hey. Hey! Hey! Damn! Okay, That's Scotty. the best Bud Light I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's my spot, King. I threw you up there. You're right. You have got to experience so many things, both as a businessman off the field and on the field. Is there a moment when I ask this question that pops your mind, like, what's the craziest shit you've ever seen in your entire life? Because there was a time there where it felt like you were just getting dropped into insane situations and the world was like watching you do things. Man vs. Wild, you and that Bear Grylls guy, oh, fucking electric. That was maybe the most electric shit I've ever seen. Is there anything that you think of whenever you think, like, what's the most ridiculous thing you've been a part of? Uh, probably some of the most ridiculous shit I ever been a part of was, uh, you know, I, I, I had got the uh, uh, the restaurant which I'm in right now, and uh, you know, when we first got it, I, you know, I would come in here and I would, you know, clean up and go outside in the front, sweep up, you know, make sure everything looked nice and shit. And uh, one morning I got up here and I noticed, you know, like, damn, this is a funky ass smell. <laughs> 
And I look you know what I mean, to the side of my front door and it's a big ass pile of shit. <laughs> and I'm talking about human shit. Yeah, and it's yeah. right on the side of the door. So I'm like, somebody done came and, <laughs> and popped the shit right in front of the door. Like, oh, this, this shit is crazy. Like, I can't be in here serving food. Motherfucker come walk in and they smell <laughs> straight ass cheeks when they come in there like, I think that's the restaurant I need to eat in. So man, I get the water hose and I'm hosing it down and you know, I see, uh, you know, we got a couple, uh, you know, uh, dolphins that, that usually walk back up in front. Hey man, did you do this? Like, oh no. So, you know, one of them owned up to it. I said, you know, man, check it out. So you don't do this no more. Look, you come by here, we get you a, you know what I mean? We get you a broom and a, uh, you know, you help, you help us, we help you. You feel me? And you know, we put together a little, uh, I put a proposition together for him and I ain't cleaning up shit no more. <laughs> it's a win-win. It's a win for everybody on that one. Hey, one of your and former you know, teammates. Hey, yeah, hey, everybody wins. You're helping the people, man. That's awesome. That's why people love you. But hey, one, one of them owned up to it. <laughs> Just a line of questioning. The line of questioning. His the name was Willie. Up. Willie. Willie owned up to Matter of fact, he just he just left out. He's saying sweeping up. He's like, hey, what's up? Oh, boy, I've been looking for you. You <laughs> okay. yeah, we, we We buzz down together up in the front of the uh, restaurant to get it all cleaned up and everything. Hey, you're helping people. Hey, you're help Willie went from shitting outside to working inside. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Let's go, Willie. Let's go. Give it up for my boy Willie, man. <laughs>
to anybody, period, except for the teams. So that means the teams are giving out this information. And now we have to, the J.J. Watt saga will continue. A team is reporting then that they offered him 15 to 16 million. I wonder who that is. I wonder how this whole thing's going to pan out, especially now with this whole Russell Wilson thing. We got big names on the move, A.J., big names. Yeah. Well, I think the only – J.J. wouldn't – I wouldn't say our, my agent told her this or said this because I would – if I'm J.J., I went out there, hey, the lowest offer I have is $15, 16000000 million a year. Not the highest. Like, when you throw it out there, just, hey, why not? Let's take a shot. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying, though, because I thought $15, 16000000 million a year – like, when I saw that number, I was like – because in my head, I was like, oh, JJ's going to a t like, hey, he's ring chasing right now. Like, that is the, and, and that's no knock on JJ. I just thought that this was a, hey, I'm going to get a ring right now at the end of this career. I have Defensive Player of the Year awards. I have MVP awards. I If I get a Super Bowl, that'd be fantastic. So when I heard 15 to 16 million a year, I'm like, okay, that is not what I thought it was going to be at all. And then I immediately was like, well, good for JJ. Like, if you're going to get another 30 to $40 million, good for you. But that wasn't what I expected to happen. So I had to know if that was coming from his team, uh, much like what you were saying, or if it was coming from teams. If what he told us is accurate, it is coming from the teams, which is even more interesting because they're the teams trying to fuck over the other teams. Whoa. <laughs> so, you know, like, then, then you have to, yeah, you know what I mean, AJ? Absolutely. Maybe you should try to get Di Diana. Now, will you think she'll give up her sources and let us know? <laughs> she won't, but she's been crushing it. This past, she is. Yeah. We have referred to a lot of Diana Rossini tweets in the last couple of days. We appreciate it, Diana, immensely, but there's no chance. We tried to. We got Rappaport coming up here in about 19 minutes or whatever. We can try to pry it out of him. Mm. I doubt he'll give it, but we will pry. We'll try to pry some shit out of him for sure. Ain't that right, Connor? Oh, yeah. Rap uh, Sheet always tells us what's going does. on. Uh, the Russell Wilson situation <laughs> is very interesting. Um, if you saw what Shefty tweeted, now I assume Ian did as well. <laughs> I won't tell him. It had been reported by an insider at the NFL <laughs> yeah. that um, Mark Rogers, I believe is his name, is the agent of Russell Wilson. He told Schefter, um, listen, we have not demanded a trade. But if Seattle was going to trade us, we'll go to New Orleans, we'll go to Las Vegas, we'll go to Chicago, oh, and we'll, yeah. we'll go to Dallas uh, to be a cowboy. So very interesting that Mark Rogers basically says, like, hey, we're not demanding a trade, but if any of these four teams would like to come get us, let's go ahead and do it. Now, more information is rolling out about the contract that Russell Wilson has. If he gets traded before June 6th, it's like a $39 million dead cap hit to the Seattle Seahawks. Post June 6th or something like that, it's like 20-some million. So it's going to be a big, uh, after June 1, would allow them to push $26 million into the 2022 season. Uh, so it would only be, I guess, a $13 million cap hit after June 1st if they were to trade Russell Wilson in Seattle. This is via at my sports update. $39 million in dead cap if they were to trade him pre-June 1. This is much like the Houston Texans situation in my eyes. You know, it's very interesting. These teams, if they do move on, they're going to be able to demand a lot uh, for it in return. And Dak going to Seattle it would be... And Ross going to Dallas. Oh. And, I mean, it would just be a very cool thing for us to talk about. But none of it really seems likely is whenever you start looking at the math of it all and the numbers behind it. But I guess they can make anything work these days. Yeah, they can. And, and can't they designate it like a post-June 1 trade? Like, yes. They can get the deal done now. And, yes. And say, like, this is, yeah. So they can save that cap money. But it does seem like every day, like, there's more and more coming out that, hey, Russ is not happy. And Russ seems to be perfectly fine walking away or getting traded somewhere. But – who are Russ's guys? Like we should ask Rappaport. Like who are his guys? Like who are his people left? In not not on the team, but like in the coaching staff and the execs. Like who I know with John Schneider, I feel like he's one of his guys. But Pete, he was always a Pete guy. And I'm, it seems like he and Pete have had some kind of weird falling out. Well, the storming out of meetings. Uh -huh. He gave him a call after watching the Super Bowl with Shoddy. Roger Goodell. I mean, yeah, Shoddy gets fired, who was letting Russ cook. Yeah. And we got philosophical differences. We don't want to, hey, we don't want to let Russ cook. You know why? Because when we let Russ cook, he just sits back there and he gets killed. He gets run. And we don't get our offensive line, doesn't get to come off the ball ever. So a not great offensive line looks even worse because they're being asked to drop into pass uh, protection every single play, is what Pete Carroll's saying. Now, what Russell's team saying is get us out of here what's that uh in the nfl insider shafter tweet um <laughs> it said demanded but it didn't say russ hasn't asked for a trade or maybe hinted that he wants one they used demanded so it was a passive aggressive request 
which is kind of what they just did. Mm-hmm. The fact that all of this is public, it shows you how upset Russ is, or how frustrated, or how Pissed. mad he is. Like this, this isn't his style. This is the first time we're seeing anything like this out of Russell. Like, yeah, I would expect him to not be in Seattle. We want the old Russ back. Oh, straight from the go, Russ. Whoa. Mm. The chop of your soul, Russ. It's set on your goals, Russ. What? Is that what you're talking about? The, uh, hey, throwback to my throwback Thursday tweet. That was from awesome. From this morning. Felt pretty good, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good thing. Seeing that then in 2017. Yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you saw that tweet. Did you see yeah. it, AJ? I felt very good about it this morning. I missed it. I got a tweet from an old teammate. Uh, it was the what we just did there, the Kanye, miss the old Kanye, the straight from the go Kanye, the yeah. chop up the soul Kanye, set on your goals Kanye. Somebody, I had an old teammate say, like, they missed me, you know, like, you know, burying people a little bit more. <laughs> and I, I, had to, uh, I had to say, like, hey, you know, different time in my life, basically is what I said. But it did make me think back to some old tweets that I sent out. So I went scrolling through mm -hmm. the old days Twitter just to go back, you know, a little glory days trip back through whenever I was, you know, a, a heel, a enjoy, just fuck anybody could get it on Twitter. Guy, that was an awesome time to be alive. You Can't still got some good it's still shut in the fuck it's, ups in the chamber. I've dropped a I couple mean, shut the fucks yeah. up and fuck up lately. <laughs> I've enjoyed that. I saw that. I saw that. Right to the point. Right to the point to these people. I, I, you know, I used to be a lot more clever. You know, I used to be a lot more clever with the way I would say it. Now it's just, oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I, I, that is. Don't got time for it. Because I think it's just like, a, oh, and I even add in sometimes, oh, shut the fuck up. So that they hear like, ah, oh, shut. The, you know what I mean? Like, it's a full thing but anyways russell wilson you're right but none of this is coming from russell it's coming from his team he's not he's not saying has he come out and said no this isn't me this is not my message no but the team is protecting russell you know what i mean like this is smart, uh the, it, smart pr play by russell yeah like it's not him like doesn't seem to be complaining it's just people around him like, which means they also had a strategy meeting okay Ooh. so which means they definitely you know how do we a, do this i mean i i don't want to say that would just be, I'm not calling, I'm not saying like this is a negative thing. I'm just saying like, it seems very apparent. The team mentioned the first thing about, the team mentioned the second thing. Now Mark Rogers, who's a part of the team said, Russ didn't do any of this. But if these four teams want to come, it's always, you know, it's a very, it is a, you're, for Russell Wilson's brand basically, where you say this is not like Russell Wilson. It's still like they're trying to save face with the old Russ of like, hey, this isn't Russ. This is still the same Russ. Just a team looking out for him is how they're kind of painting it, you know? Yeah, I think, I mean, it seems like as time has gone and Russell's been in the league longer and longer, it seems like his team has, has grown. And then he meets, you know, he marries Sierra. I think of her. She is a superstar. So she's used to having a team too. Man, there's got to be a lot of meetings going on. Oh, yeah. Well, that's why they got that full football field in the oh, back. Exactly. <laughs> All right. You know, because COVID protocol is not allowed to meet in the building. We're going to meet outside like the Los Angeles Rams did at Hard Knocks. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on with Team 3. They got they got uh, PR for both both PR teams down. Uh, you'll be red zone, <laughs> north side of the field, okay? Uh, the the alumni section there in between the 30s, all right, where all the big money spent. That'll be the, the agents. The agents will be having their meetings okay. there. Then in the other red zone, that's where we'll have the body gurus, the chefs, to talk about how we're going to change this. Russ will be on a booger mobile yes. driving <laughs> through, okay, stopping at each section with a pitch deck behind him in the booger mobile from monday night football. a couple speakers you know wireless microphone no no it's oh he's got the earpiece he's got this this microphone yeah. is on for sure all right i hope he does i hope he films something like that i hope he sees this and he actually does like a full production for well, shit that's genius well every time it comes out like you know his team his camp um, you just think to yourself like all right like what because i guess if if you guys were to be doing that, okay, if like if this was to happen to us, it would be like Pat McAfee's team is blah blah blah. That'd be those guys. Everybody on the internet would be like, "Well, which fucking idiot's probably doing that?" Oh, it's probably the Boston guy. Slick back hair. <laughs> it's, it's probably, probably 
every, so now like with everything that comes out, I'm like, okay, the no offensive line, tired of being beat up. Is that the body guru? Is that the chiropractor? Like what member of the team is coming out the loudest in the pitch meetings for what we're doing with team three this year? And the offensive line must just be like, all right, like you don't have to say it this many times, Russ. We know we sucked last year. Just give us a break. That was my first reaction when this all came out. I was yeah. like, he's going to have to deal with that offensive line. Quarterback offensive line is a very tight relationship. Yeah. Obviously. It, it, Think about it, Pat, too. Like, that's a huge thing you bring up, Connor. Like, how do you repair that relationship? Because we know Dead. professional athletes, A, aren't scared to hold a grudge forever on certain things. There's a lot of people like that. And I think offensive linemen in general, those guys, too, like, I don't think they're going to get over it very quickly, the fact that they feel like they've been called out publicly by the quarterback. You know, the, uh, the sunshine rep <laughs> let them through. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I could potentially see, uh, you know, guys probably – can we go through their offensive linemen? Who's like a paid offensive lineman who's a vet who's probably the leader of the room there? Uh, now, granted, he would never just let somebody through to kill the quarterback because that would affect him and his team. But, man, that – a little bit of the, the back of the mind of this guy. Oh, there's some – there's definitely like uh, Dwayne Brown, Mike Ayupati, I- 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 who was with the 49ers for a while. Just I- just just what, what, just, what just happened? What, are you okay? He just yeah. retired. You smell toast. <laughs> well, I'm saying he was on the line last year. Ayupati, <laughs> Ayupati, I-, 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 I wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't hear. Who, who was that? I couldn't hear. It. I don't even know if Dwayne Brown's there anymore. <laughs> Mike Ayupati. Uh, you even know where you are. It's a tough oh, name. <laughs> I was on vacation, dude. Hey, Diggs, listen. Have you heard me speak the last couple of days? I'm fucking terrible. Don't, don't you worry about that. But it did seem like your brain stopped in the middle <laughs> I didn't of know if day. I wanted to go EU potty or IU potty. And it is IU potty, so I got there. <laughs> well, it's interesting because there's two I's, two different pronunciations in the same goddamn name. Mm-hmm. That'll get you. But no, that, that'll dude. cause you to have a situation. We just saw it. Uh... The other dudes, I have no idea who they are. Yeah. Well, I probably but, did retire, though. Russ has got to be hoping they just bring two or three new linemen in so the old guys have to buy in, right? Well, and those people would have to be like Russ's guys that he would bring in, and he would be having Some them rookies. over on that f- football field. Like He wants three He wants three rookies coming in there. He can, he can help those guys out. <laughs> hey, hey, you hey, you know why you're here. Go Hawks, all right? These old guys are going to tell you to kill me. Don't you do that. Fuck them. That's why you're here. Let's go. Go Hawks, huh? Have you over, Sierra? Me and, me and Sierra will do a whole uh, concert for you in our costumes. We'll fucking do it. Wow. We'll, we'll do this whole thing. I mean, it, it, Russ is going to have to need his guys to get in there. You know what I mean? I'm, that's why I'm wondering, like, how many guys like that does he have around that are still Russ guys? What if we never hear go Hawks again? I believe it is. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We have a moment of silence for it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's the opposite of what you just did right there. <laughs> laughing on. into laughing the microphone. About AJ. Oh, we would like to potentially. I don't know why it's funny. I'm sorry. Go. Well, we'd like to. You know what I mean? Like, I would like to go on with this moment of silence, but it continues to get altered and stopped and paused and delayed from a man in Columbus, Ohio, who obviously has no respect for the thing we are about to memorialize with a stoppage of talking. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the greatest things to ever happen to sports talk interviews is at the end of every conversation Russell Wilson has, he says, go Hawks. Amongst all the turmoil right now with potential Russell fucking Seattle, like Tommy fucking Foxborough going on behind the scenes with the Seahawks, with Russell Wilson getting forced out of any big decision. Will we ever hear go Hawks again? Even if he's still on the Seahawks, it seems like he's not happy to be a Seahawk. Will he still end every single interview with a go Hawks? We're thinking not. So for that, we will celebrate the life that was the go Hawks with a moment of silence right now. Stop. Go Hawks. Go Way too long. Pat have a stroke? Shut up for a second. <laughs> Moment passed. Thank you for that. Go Hawks. Every Go Hawks in 2012. That was just one year. <laughs> that, was, that was just one year of Go Hawks right there, AJ. <laughs> you couldn't even have a moment of silence for that, AJ. Come on, dude. I couldn't Staple. hear it. I couldn't hear it through my ears until the end when I got real Could quiet. you imagine how angry Ty Schmidt would be if Russell goes to the Bears? He has oh. to see him twice a year. And oh. he's Russ drop a bear think down. About, yes. Hold on no. Think about how angry <laughs> Ty Schmidt is right now. Yeah. Knowing that it is kind of like, you know, kind of Russell – 
image burial season right now, potentially. And this is where Ty has, Ty is always in season in this particular case, what he would be saying right now, which is probably why, you know, um, we get attacked by Seahawks fans for never talking about the Seahawks. We do, but inevitably it'll end with an incredibly savage line from a man yeah. that is a diehard Packers fan who is about fed up with everything Russell Wilson. Oh, and Ty's point. probably tried to call Mitt back there like 15 <laughs> different times when he's trying to be able to get through. Get me yeah. on the fucking air. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that is probably something he is saying. Let's go to uh, Carl in Brooklyn, then we'll get to a break because Ian Rapaport will join us on the other side. Carl, what's going on? Hey, Pat and the boys, how you doing? Hey, not too shabby, Carl. What do you want to talk about? Carl, 20, 12, 21, 12, 11. Think, yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. you know how players get paid a certain amount during the season, but what happens when the playoff comes around? Do they still get paid, like, the salary from the season, and do they get checked in the offseason? Great question, Carl. Everybody makes the same exact amount of money every playoff game. Uh, on the team. The guys that have the buy don't get paid. I don't remember, or I don't know if that's still happening or not, uh, but I do know a lot of guys take uh, massive pay cuts whenever the playoffs happen, the high-end tier guys that you see that make a lot of money, and then the bottom half of the roster love playoff bonuses. I mean, it is a beautiful thing. Normally, you get to the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl. I'm not 100% sure, actually, but you go to the Super Bowl. AJ will probably have to tell you that. It's over a $130,000 bonus, $150,000 bonus throughout the entire thing. I don't know what winning the Super Bowl is, but everybody makes the same amount of money on the team. Yeah, and who's, who it's the biggest for are, like, trainers or people that work for the team that get – like a full playoff share. There's a few people outside of the coaching staff that get like playoff, like a full share. And then there's some that get percentages. So it's huge for them. Think about it. If you're making $120,000 a year and then all of a sudden you get a $125,000 bonus. That's pretty good. Yeah, you're making 80 grand a year, 75 grand a year. And then they're like, hey, boys, that's up. Yeah, here we go. Hey, it fucking matters now. Huh? Here we go. Here we go. That the uh, play, uh, uh, Pro Bowl, same thing. Mm -hmm. Pro Bowl, same thing. The, the coaches and the yeah. athletic trainers, the whole staff that goes out there, uh, the equipment managers, everybody, they get a bonus if they win the Pro Bowl or it's higher or, or if you lose it. So, you know, whenever I was out there trying to talk luck and to go mm -hmm. back onto the field to play so we could get a win because it's an extra 40 grand. Okay, that's a big deal. Well, he's like, I can't do that, obviously. That would be very disrespectful. But I know that I had a team of – Equipment managers and trainers that were like, let's, let's get, him get out there. Let's go ahead and get a win here, shall we? Let's Coach, get to hey, a Hey, coaches too. Oh, yeah. I, had multiple, I had multiple coaches tell me, hey, don't mess with my money, man. Like, okay, we're winning these playoff games because that's a big deal for them. All right, let's get to a break. Ian Rappaport's on the other side. Great question there from Brooklyn. Oh. Something that I would have just thought was common knowledge, mm -hmm. probably a lot of people had no idea about right there. You should see the preseason checks. Hey, there's guys taking massive pickups. It was like 800 bucks back in the day. Then it was 1300 bucks. Guys playing preseason games. You know that third game where like, hey, this is a real one. Guys are playing three quarters in these games. The next day they get a check that is going to get wiped out completely because the taxes will kill it anyways. It's like 1200 bucks. And then you have like a practice squad guy getting that check. It's like, oh. Yeah, another week, baby. <laughs> Incentives in the Super Bowl, too. Like, A.B. and Tom Brady, they both made 500 k 750 k for winning. It. And Pro Bowl bonuses. That's why you tend to potentially hate the media. <laughs> you know? Mm. Ah. If there's 250 grand on the line, huh. you better start recognizing what's going on here. This is Pat McAfee Show. We're back on the other side with the Ian Report. Cheers. Last year, Minnesota has shown up. Row the boats, Caillou Mall, go Gophers. Let's get the axe and keep that thing in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The place is about to lose their minds. Ladies and gentlemen, watch a man maestro a crowd like Coach Lee Corso.
Now he'll say to me, works every time, what? Every time. <laughs> dog pee on a field. This obviously led to a nightmare situation for Luke Logan, who oh. misses the extra point. Kick An it. absolute pandemonium happened. Make it a but in Dwayne Haskins' defense, the Redskins and Dwayne Haskins might never win a game again. That guy's flexing like PJ <laughs> flex a little bit. Good sells a little bit. Oh. Great he got me the throw. Ref. Uh, throw the uh. flag. Sell your soul. That who hates Iowa? <laughs> A lot of hate here in Minnesota, Maria. Hey, you look good, pal. For me, right after we leave this octagon, I'm going to Lake Minnetonka. I'm pulling a swordfish out of there. Then I'm going to stop by Paisley Park. I'm going to pay my respects to Prince in the Purple Rain. Then I'm going to walk into TCF Bank Stadium, and I'm going to say, Every day is game day for these guys. It's showtime on the Pat McAfee Show. You get it, AJ? Every day's game day, dude. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Got it. Did you, heard I, did you hear I spoke at Adweek? Uh, no, what do you mean? Whoa. You would never understand. <laughs> Joining us now, <laughs> works for the NFL <laughs> Network. He also hopes ra hosts Rap Sheet and Friends. You can find him on social media, at Rap Sheet. A lot of NFL breaking news. Can't wait to chat with this man, friend of the show, ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rap. Yeah, Rap Sheet! Hey, Rap Sheet, how you doing, pal? Um, I'm, I'm struggling to understand the world. I just learned that uh, on Twitter, hashtags don't actually help with anything anymore. What do you mean? What happened? They're just not, they don't cause your tweet to stand. I always hashtag the teams that I'm tweeting about. From what I understand, according to my latest information, that actually doesn't mean much. Okay, it so it does mean stuff. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's do a little, okay, here we are. Social Pretty Media 101. Let's do it. So the hashtag will help people find information about whatever you are talking about in an assorted right. manner. Now, with you being a blue check mark news breaking tweet making you know just a boss out there yours will probably sit a little bit higher within the search but there are very rarely are people searching via hashtags anymore because of the way the right. algorithm's set up with news that so you need to know like. basically being in front of you now if you ever do a giveaway or something like that that is the only way to do it because it sorts everybody in the same fashion and you can go back time-wise to see the first ever response oh 
Is it, is it? Ah, interesting. Okay. Is that That's hashtag Russell yeah, Wilson? Like Let's talk about it. Is that hashtag Russell Wilson? Because here's the thing about the hashtag Seattle Seahawks. It's alleged now <laughs> $39 million dead cap space if he yeah. was to be traded. $26 million of that can be pushed to 2022 if he's traded post-June 1. And they could designate that. Is there anything real happening there? It, Mike Ro- or Mark Rogers came out allegedly and said he, he hasn't demanded, but these are four places he'll go. Yeah. How do the Seahawks feel about this? And is this anywhere near? Near real rap sheet. It's real in that Russell Wilson and the Seahawks do have an issue. Like the relationship is not great. And it's not been great for some time. I mean, if you think about the way this season happened, you know, they were humming along, their offense was going great. Um, and they got to kind of week eight and they started running the ball. They started trying to protect the ball. And Russell Wilson stopped being happy with the offense because they stopped letting them cook for lack of a better way of saying mm. it. Took him out of the kitchen. That, mm. I, I mean, yeah. Mm. They uh, took him out of the kitchen. Oh, I would just, hold on. Did I mute? Can you guys hear me? Already? Oh, yeah, you sound amazing. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, so you get to week eight, the offense changes. Then this year, they go throughout the year. They kind of struggle toward the end, obviously lose in the playoffs. And then, you know, it's clear that Russell Wilson wants more of a say. They go through the offensive coordinator process. He does have a say in that. Uh, so he did kind of a little bit help pick the offensive coordinator. That is good. But there's some issues there that they need to fix as far as the direction of the team. And so teams started calling. And this is something I reported during the Super Bowl. A couple of teams called. Seattle said, get out of here. Now more than 10 teams have called. Okay, so there's clearly interest. Here are the two main issues. One the cap hit is enormous. It's not something you can't survive. If you're going to completely rebuild, like for instance, if you're going to trade him and then draft a quarterback in the first round, you can deal with it, but it's not ideal. So the cap hit is enormous to trade Russell Wilson now. Second of all, Pete Carroll's 70 years old. There's no way he wants to rebuild. It is in the best interest of everyone for this thing to work. That is where we are. But are the, is it going to be able to, to come back from this, I feel like? We've never seen Russell Wilson act like this, especially publicly. I can imagine he's been frustrated for a long time. Are they going to be able True. to mend this, not only with the coaching staff, but the players too? That O-line can't feel great about it. No, uh, you're right. Everything you said is true. Um, contrast to what Pat usually says, which is kind of like some true, some not. But everything you said is true. Okay. We've seen – but we've seen this before. We haven't seen it from Russell kind of out front like this, but – We've seen Tom Brady and the Patriots have a rift. There's been some times with Aaron Rodgers, our good friend, a friend of the show who has not been that happy with his current team, uh, the Green Bay Packers. Um, What are you hearing? Other quarterbacks speak out and they've gotten it fixed. I would think that this would be similar. Okay, how about Deshaun Watson then? I mean, what you just said about Aaron, very interesting because, you know, I haven't heard Aaron say anything. That's all been, you know, chatter or whatever. Is he reconstructing his contract? That'll be something you could potentially answer down the road there. I don't want to put anybody in a bad spot. But with Deshaun Watson, are they going to have to trade him? Is that going to – because they are not even answering calls, right? But are you getting the feeling that they're going to hold strong and hold firm on this? Because it seems like, from all accounts, Deshaun Watson and his team are going to do the same exact thing. And we might have old chicken in the road type situations situation which you probably don't know about yeah. but it's like you know staying in front of a truck or whatever you know what i mean yeah i mean i've I, i've heard of people doing that i've never done it myself because you'd have to have real stones or whatever to that i i, I get out of the way yeah I, smart yep got it me too um at this point well I, yeah early in your career maybe anyway um he yeah <laughs> i haven't gotten the sense at all that deshaun watson has changed his stance not one bit okay so he has said he wants to be traded. He has told the team that. He does not plan on playing for the Texans again or anytime soon. The Texans do not plan on trading him. Any team that's called, even if they've had other discussions about other players, all the conversations have been like, yeah, not Deshaun, but what else you want to talk about? Like, it's just been no. So I don't know which side is going to win out. I know for the team, to go through this with your starting quarterback is incredibly challenging. If he sits out, it would be very punitive for him, and it would also leave the team with no quarterback. That's bad for all people. I don't know which way this is going to end, but I don't see it ending anytime soon at all. Okay, so before Connor has a great question for you, um, whenever you talk about J.J. Watt, all right, we have a source 
in this particular story as well. Oh. J.J. Watt told us today, <laughs> oh. okay, he told us today uh, that he and his agent aren't talking to anybody right now. We're talking to teams. We're not talking to anybody. So with any information we are hearing about the J.J. Watt situation, that must mean that that's coming from teams then, right? That, that Like whenever you're getting information or information is being leaked, you automatically assume like, okay, it's either coming from the player or it's coming from the other side. So whenever we hear stuff that's coming out about offers and teams, is yeah, that the yeah, teams yeah. reaching out then? If it's not JJ saying like we are interested and then that's how you kind of gather like, hey, there's 13 teams that I've talked to that are interested or how is that whole, whole thing kind of? Yeah. I mean, I would say there are plenty of reasons for agents to talk. Right. Like if you're if you have a player who let's say a player is not getting the kind of market he wanted. Right. Then the agent could be like, hey, uh, you know, could you you don't see a lot of this anymore because it's so transparent. But probably five years ago, you'd see a lot of like, hey, this player is getting, you know, getting significant interest from a lot of teams and everyone's like, mm, OK, sure he is. Um, J.J. Watt doesn't need to say anything. His team, his camp doesn't need to say anything. He is getting significant interest. What is happening now is. All the teams that are interested are kind of calling around and I would say guessing a little bit as far as what the other offers are. Because I don't even get the sense that Watts agents have shared with teams what other teams have offered. Usually you don't do that until it gets right down to the end and he's not there. So I think a lot of the information you're hearing is teams calling around and like gossiping, for lack of a better word, just trying to figure out like, all right, what did you offer? Like, What have we offered? Um, you know, like that's trying to figure out the landscape a little bit. 15 to 16 million uh, reported this morning. That was wild. Uh, what do you have, Connor? Yeah, Rap Sheet, it was reported that uh, the Raiders were allegedly going to give Derek Carr a contract extension. Now that Russell Wilson uh, has the Raiders as one of the four teams he prefer preferred to go to, will Gruden and the Raiders make a push for him instead? Great question. I would say until, in, until – uh, until the future of Derek Carr is solidified, I would say the Raiders are open for anything. Whoa. Because they're just, they, they've kept the door open. Um, teams have called on Derek. I know that. Teams have called on Marcus Mariota. I know that. They have not engaged on anything with Derek Carr yet at all because even if they were going to trade him, how would they replace him? So, yes, Russell Wilson would make sense. It's very far-fetched. I mean, just think about it because if you're Seattle, you're trading Russell Wilson – it's a forty million dollar cap hit plus twenty five million dollars from what Derek Carr pays. That's sixty five million dollars against the cap just for your quarterback. It's a lot. Yeah, but you can move. Hey, we can move twenty six of that or twenty two of that to twenty twenty two. We can kick that can down the road. Mm -hmm. We kick. Mm -hmm. Hey, we kick that can down the road. Okay. You know what I mean? TV. Show. I mean, you you can always do that. I would say this. Like, I would expect at some point the Raiders to commit to Derek Carr in some sort of okay. in some sort of way. Like, hey, I, I don't about, know how it's going to be, but I do expect him to commit to Derek Carr. How about Vaughn Miller? It sounds like the, the Broncos, like he's not going to be there next year. What does his market look like? And, and you think he's going to be another guy like, hey, let's go, let's go find a ring somewhere. But what kind of market do you think he has? Uh, if he's free, he's going to have a very good market. I, I will say at this point, I doubt that he's free because they got the team option coming up. Uh, it's, I don't think they're going to pick up the option. Because I think there's a good chance – I think there's a real chance the two sides get together and make it make sense. He wants to finish his career in Denver. He's awesome. Missed last year with an injury. They have cap space. It's hard to get better by letting one of your best players walk. So I would imagine there'll be some sort of compromise to smooth out his cap hit and make it make sense. Is Von Miller going to play quarterback there too? Are they Ooh. sold on Drew Locke? There was a chance that the Denver Broncos allegedly were already in the middle of a quarterback trade uh, this offseason thus far. I don't know if that's true or not, but what's going on with the Denver quarterback situation? Because everybody's talking about them really wanting, and they have some salary cap allegedly. Uh, if right. they release Von Miller, they have any more. What are they thinking? What are they they want to move on from Drew? No. Uh, they And they've had – opportunities to because teams you know as all the calls have happened Goff and Stafford like teams have called about Drew Locke because the potential is there the Broncos haven't come close to trading him and I honestly doubt that they will because he, here's the problem let's say the Broncos trade Drew Locke and then what he did the last like four games of the season let's say that's what he does for 16 games well then it's like why did you trade that guy um 
I mean, look, if Deshaun Watson becomes actually available, if Russell Wilson becomes available, I would imagine the Broncos would be interested because they're always going to be interested. Otherwise, like, I think it's going to be Drew Locke and then maybe maybe a draft zone, maybe bring in a good backup. But, you know, Drew Locke has the potential, and it's scary to trade a guy before he – before you see whether he's going to do it or not. Hey, potential, get your ass fired. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that's classic coach speak right there who is not happy with what the front office is doing with a player because the scouting department says this guy should have a ceiling of this. And the coach is like, well, you're putting him oh and where he is really at, though, which is here, and I'm getting fired for it. Interesting to see how it all pans out. It, it's that, amazing how much of that is, especially right now as everyone's trying to figure out the roster, it's incredible how much of that is going on right now. Oh, it happens. By the way, I was a part of one terribly losing season, and that that was just like a basically everyday meeting thing that kind of led off. Well, yeah. uh, the potential is fucking great, but I'll tell you what, can't play. Yeah. Hmm. So, can't play. I'd rather I should suit up and play linebacker. Last thing here before we let you go. Uh, thanks for joining us, Ian. By the way, you're the best. Um, Love it. Well, I mean, today you were pretty. I mean, today you were pretty. You know, it's kind of like uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, it was good. Yeah, it was good, but the rap sheet standard, yeah. you know, is just so. Yeah. Hard. Well, I mean, that's I've created the yeah, and that's, it's my own fault for being so good in previous appearances. That's what I'm saying. And by the way, might be able to get it right here, though. Ooh. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think Come we're on. we're judging you on full interviews in the past when we haven't really finished this conversation yet. So, are we falsely judging you before seeing the entire picture? I think so. What's going to happen first? Do you think? What seems to be the most likely thing that's going to happen with all these stories that are brewing right now, and there are a plenty of them cooking right now? You mean like which trade might happen? Like which which domino? I would. You're, you're, that's what you're talking, right? Hey, which which card in the house of cards is going to get pulled okay. out first and make the move uh, for everybody else? I would say I don't get the sense Russell is going to happen anytime soon. I don't get the sense to Sean, maybe Sam Darnold, but that's going to be like we're talking April. I don't know. Like it's this. I mean, this is fun to talk about today with Russell Wilson, but all of these things, like usually you get to mid-March, you have free agency. It's crazy. And then you kind of prepare for the draft, and the draft happens, and I get to go play golf. Um, this year it's going to be different. I think free agency will be slower, and some of these trades might happen in April if they happen. Uh, so we're going to get some. We're going to get a lot more to talk about in, say, April and leading up to the draft than we usually do. Well, we appreciate you stopping by. Great answer. Great interview, by the way. Great wow. answer. You did well. It was a rap sheet standard. I appreciate you. There Ladies you and go. gentlemen, at Thanks, rap guys. sheet, Ian Rapport from the NFL Network. Thank yeah, you, Ian. Um, so he basically said, Yans are going to have to just make shit up for at least another month, month and a half. Yeah, we got free agency here for half, first half of March. Yeah, that's fine. We do it. We've been doing that every day. <laughs> yeah, come on. By the way, it's not even us. We just observe and report the bullshit that's being made up. That's good for us. A year ago, we didn't have sports for got seven months. Yeah, but no, you know, but there really wasn't much else going on either. <laughs> when's, you know, the Aussie, the world. when's the Aussies start? Who? Aussies. <laughs> Aussie World Football. I think it's already started. I've, I've seen the boys out there having a kick or two. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, out on the field or whatever. Is that what they call it? Yeah, dude. Have a kick? Yeah, they're in training yeah. camp. March 18th is week one. So, Perfect timing. Uh, I mean, that's still some time. Uh, let's get to uh, one, Tony. let's get to Jack over here in Denver. <laughs> Sorry, What's going bro. on, Jack? What's up, Pat, AJ, and the boys? I'm just calling to see if we can maybe get another legendary Jim Ursay story. Uh, I was going to ask about Drew Locke, but the rap sheet just covered that. So if we could get another story like that, that'd be great. All right, hold on. Are you a Broncos fan? I am. Are you sold on Drew Locke being your quarterback? I'm not. I was kind of hoping my boy Wentz would maybe go there, but uh, I don't think Drew Locke's got the it factor. Hey, we can still maybe make that happen, Jack. The it <laughs> factor, though, by the way, I think that is what Drew Locke does have, right? In that kind of thing? Yeah, swag. You just wonder afraid. if he's going to be able to be the guy all Consistency. the time. Consistency. Last two years, there's been great moments from Drew Locke. Great, great moments. He throws the football. Just not enough, right? I think so, yeah. And I tried to, you know, I knew Broncos Nation was going to say that because – a hashtag Broncos Nation I hopped into, Ooh. you know, one day just to kind of scroll through to see what they're thinking or whatever. Because yeah, yeah. those are the most loyal. The ones that use the hashtag yeah. are the most loyal. So it's like, all right, I want to check in to hear what they're saying about it. And a lot of them were saying like, hey, it's week 17 and we still don't know if he's the guy. Don't we? Isn't that kind of the answer? Hmm. But maybe Drew Locke does like Josh Allen. <laughs> well, patience pay off in the Mile High City. We shall see. AJ. Hey, it does sound though. It sounds like Rap Sheet knows that 
Von Miller is going to still be in Denver, that they're going to find a way to what work out just a, uh, would that be an extension? If you they say, Hey, we're not going to pick up your option and, and you restructure and you, what they give them a two year deal or something, three year deal. Yeah. And what happened with the, um, then who was releasing that information? Cause he said Vaughn wants to stay there. I was like, well, maybe Vaughn's people were releasing the information that he was potentially going to be going elsewhere because he wanted teams to potentially see if he would fit into the puzzle and go, you know, another ring chase or whatever, you know, at the end, if you want to get out there, but he's like, no, Vaughn wants to stay there. They want him there. It's like, well, then why'd that report even happen? I wonder, oh, because there's just a bunch of bullshit everywhere. Mm-hmm. That's why there's a bunch yeah. of bullshit. Probably, but if, if Vaughn Miller was an unrestricted free agent, he could get a big old deal, I think, from a good team. Well, JJ is 15 to 16 million. That's, yeah. That's the, say, he should say, come out and say, we didn't, that's the basement. That's the absolute bottom floor <laughs> of what it will be per year for me. What, you just kind of took quite a shot there at JJ, I think. I did? What are you talking I about? So. No, then I'm he saying kinda he kind of did. Right? I, mean, I, was trying to, I was trying to piece it together there. Are you, first off, did you have another stroke? It's a compliment saying <laughs> driving his today. price up because if he says, hey, the max is 15, 16 per year, if I'm JJ, I'm saying no. I want more per year than that. That's the absolute win, bottom dude. basement I'll take. It could be 15. It could be 30 million a year. Okay. All right. I just want to end. What did you think I was saying? Well, it sounded like you said, well, if that's the most that he's getting, that's the bottom that I'm getting offered. Like that, that's kind of what it sounded like. But I took it in the wrong fashion. I took it in the wrong fashion. That's on me. And I have had zero strokes today. Diggs had a stroke, oh, yeah. not me. Okay. So please have a little bit of respect for the brains in this studio. What's that, Diggs? Did you guess who's older between J.J. Watt and Vaughn Miller? Well, see, that sounds like a trick question. So now we have to go with the opposite of what we think. I would think J.J.'s older than Vaughn Miller. But... With the way you asked said question, feels like Von Miller probably older than J.J. Watt. Von Miller is four days younger than J.J. Oh, Watt. Oh, wow. That was a bullshit style Tony. question for the No, I would have guessed that J- I, like J.J.'s 31. I thought J.J. was like 35 years old for some reason. I thought he was older than, much older than Von Miller as well. But then because of the way you asked yeah, it, yeah. I switched the thing. Great question by you. Good leading question right there by kind of painting the picture there for us to go the opposite direction can't do that in court a little misdirection can't do that in court. no leading questions i object everybody heard it though so (laughs) it will stay let's go to juice in arkansas what's going on juice hey pat aj and the boys how y'all doing hey good how are you pal i'm pretty good i just i've been waiting to know what team are you going to pick to play against these aliens that you said you could just slap around so easily Okay, hold on no, one right. second. What? <laughs> who said that I said that we could just smack these aliens around right in the mouth? You did. You did. You said if they came down asking a ridiculous question, we could just slap them right in the face. And I'm like, they can clone a whole football team, and yet we're going to slap them in the face? Uh, you know what, Juice? I mean, I feel like I'm getting taken out of context. You're just assuming that all these aliens are all all knowing. Let's assume there's some white trash, dumbass, stupid aliens that maybe are floating around space right now. Let's let's not assume that every one of them are super smart all the time. I assume there is a dumb planet that could potentially come down, hitch a ride with some Elon Musk from some other planet, come down to space, or come down to planet Earth. And if they start talking out of pocket, we're gonna have to smack that particular group of aliens right in the motherfucking mouth. Hell yeah. Hell now. Not- there are some aliens, I do believe, and I would say probably most in this particular case, that are uh, much smarter than us. Uh, they have uh, much better technology. Just what, yesterday or two days ago, an American Airlines pilot yep. uh, reported that he thought a missile was being shot above him. Uh, it turns out it was fucking UFO over there in New mm-hmm. Mexico, all right? So that just happened That's a couple a days ago. Those particular aliens, you don't want to mess with because they will... You know they'll they could probably teleport, move around, and they'll slap you on the other side. It's like in the uh, it's in the Creed Oculus game where the hands just disappear and then they land on you. That's probably what some aliens have. But the dumbass aliens, we can smack them right in the fucking mouth. We got to have a little bit of faith here that we are not the weakest, dumbest, uh, worst group of people in our galaxy or our universe. No way. We still got Clowney and Brock Lesnar. So I mean, we'll be yeah, fine. JJ Watt's got nothing to do. He's not even on a team right now. Come on. <laughs> How do you tell the difference between the two, though? Well, you, you'll be able to tell. You'll be able to tell. You know when you'll see it. Look in the eyes, too. <clears throat> you'll be able to tell. Don't you think? No, I don't. Look in the eyes. Are they going to communicate? Maybe if they can they open up and, and open their mouth and speak English to you? What, what if one comes and it lands in the south somehow? And then it travels up to, like, the north. And the north is always like, well, if, 
if I hear a Southern accent, I automatically assume that they are stupid. What if the alien, though, it, oh. it's first was from oh. the South, and an alien <laughs> pops up there in New England and is like, hey, how y'all doing? They're like, oh, this is a dumb fucking alien. Or whatever. Like, bang, 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 dead. You know what I mean? That would be awesome, be, that would be awesome if that happened. Need that. <laughs> Need that to happen. Or, or the alien accidentally somehow stumbles into one of the rivers in Pittsburgh and gets a Yinzer accent, oh, oh. and then all of a sudden it goes in. Great. Oh, look at this, look at this little, look at this dumbass little Yinz alien. What are you guys like? You know? Oh, my God. Hopefully they don't land in Florida, just because then they'll think the whole damn country's lawless. Wide open. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, because I assume they're going to want to adapt a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. To what we got going on. Adapt the fact that you, uh, The fact that you thought about that, like, uh, what if you land, lands in the South? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just the whole thing. The whole thing that came together in your brain that we got to see in real time yeah. was really a treat. Well, wait, wait until you see what that becomes. By the way, that one, that one is that one's going to probably cook for a little bit. Where I'm going to put a, probably an entire theory together about how it's actually probable at this point. Not even like a chance that it's not going to happen. It's definitely going to happen. And if one lands in Houston and goes to an Easter Bee server, and, and, and then all of a sudden Wolf you got fish. an Easter Bee alien, you know, you got these aliens from this <laughs> yeah. chaplain walking in there, oh, pow! <laughs> Sugar water. <laughs> oh, <man. All> right. <laughs> hey, Pat. Yeah, bub. Our friend uh, Doovy. Yeah. Did some digging. Doovy climbing. Here we go. NF at NFL <laughs> underscore D O V climbing. I believe, and that's K L E I M A N. Not exactly a whiz or know it all. I believe he's a German fellow that covers the NFL. What did Doovy say? So Shefty had the original tweet about that said that Wilson has not demanded a trade, and then he deleted that tweet. Shefter and, did? Yeah, and re-put out, Russell Wilson has told the Seahawks he wants to play in Seattle. If a trade were considered, he would only consider these teams. So maybe he, he did demand or ask. Or, no, no, no. Do we have the tweet? Can we put it back in up? The group. What happened? You see, what had happened was what actually Shefter puts that tweet out. Seattle Seahawks call Russell Wilson's Mark Rogers and say, why are we saying that you haven't demanded a trade or whatever? Uh, and Mark Rogers probably says, no, I said he wanted to be a Seahawk, but if these teams were to do it, Adam Schefter, uh, only part he deleted is Wilson didn't demand trade. Does removing the part mean he possibly did demand trade? Adam Schefter tweet, Russell Wilson has told the Seahawks he wants to play in Seattle, but if a trade were considered, the only teams he would go to are the Cowboys, Saints, Raiders, and Bears, his agent Mark Rogers said to ESPN. The original said Seahawks QB Russell Wilson has not demanded a trade. His agent Mark Rogers told ESPN Wilson has told the Seahawks he wants to play in Seattle, but if a trade were considered, oh, oh Shefty, Shefty, he just said that. Hey, I won't say, I will not say that he uh, he he demanded a trade, but I will put two tweets back to back that leave one omitted sentence that sure sounds like Russell Wilson walked in there. Team alongside of them, Sierra, in the Busta and Missy Elliott costumes with all their gurus and chiropractors and said, get me the fuck out of here. I want to play here, but get me the fuck out of here. Wow. Interesting. Or, or this is all. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Does no. Does it smell like. No. Is this all shit? bullshit? Right? No. no. Oh, no. This is all no. bullshit. No, no. Interesting. What do you think, AJ? Why don't you send uh, Team 3 a text and get get an answer just like you did from JJ? All right. So. Could you imagine if I just FaceTime Russell Wilson? Hey, Russ. There, are a, up, of, there are a couple notables, okay, that I would feel comfortable enough with my relationship that if something like this was happening where I would FaceTime them live, and as soon as they answer, I would go, we are live. Hey, we are live. Just everything you were about to say is that bullshit. Turns out Russell Wilson's not one of them. Well, so he's not one of those guys <laughs> that I would uh, that I would do that to. Would be awesome to gauge how the punters are feeling over there, just because yeah. if Russ leaves, they, you know, their job, their workload might be expanding a little. Michael bit. Dixon, although I have great respect for him, I believe we are uh, f friends. I've never really talked to him in real life. I ah. think. now's not the time to make the first call to the Aussie bomber, <laughs> Michael Dixon. Let's go to Tyler and Charlotte. What's going on, Tyler? Hey, how you doing today, Pat? Hey, not too shabby, Tyler. What do you want to talk about? Hey, quick shout out to my boys back in uh, Charlotte and Raleigh, uh, Graham, Blaze. Oh, yep. Shout out. Let's go to Justin shout in Oklahoma. Out. What's going on, Justin? <laughs> well, what up, Pat AJ? Can't. Shout out to the boys. Hey, 
What up, Justin? Great to hear from you. Thanks for not reading off your entire uh, citizen <laughs> list of uh, the population of your town that you're from. What do you want to talk right, about, right. Justin? Hey, hey, real quick, the perfect scenario is right here for, for Jerry Jones with Russell Wilson saying he wants to go to the Cowboys. So how do you get Russell Wilson to the Cowboys? You offer up not only Dak, but we know Pat uh, Pete Carroll wants a running back, so why not offer Zeke? along with that and it makes both people happy and now the cowboys are in the market for a running back so why not go in the same the same conference and go over to tampa bay and offer leonard fournette a little bit of that money you <laughs> saved with the dak contract and hell you may even be able to pick up godwin with that and take two people away from old Tom Brady to win the Super Bowl. I hope Jerry Jones is listening. Yeah. <laughs> Justin in Oklahoma just laid that song bitch out there. Now, who was the running back? Pollard. No. Yeah, Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard. He came in and was having big games, right? And everybody was like, blah, blah, blah. Zeke's still high level, high level, high level, great, court, or great running back. But his contract also big. That'd be wild if you put Dak and Zeke on a plane to Seattle with that dead cap space hit. Seattle might not be able to pay a single other person if they're going to pay Dak and Zeke and the dead cap hit that potentially comes along trading Russell Wilson. But maybe that'll be a beautiful situation. And you can draft Najee Harris in the top 10 as well. There we go. You want that running back. There we go. <laughs> AJ, last minute here on Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio. Anything to say to the listeners before Chris Mad Dog Russo, a much better show than ours, starts? Well, I just have a question on who uh, me and you will be talking to at 3, three o'clock. <laughs> we'll be talking to Shinigami. Shinigami! Uh, okay, Street Beef Spider Champion, uh, West Coast Champion. Shout, Shout out, out, Rachel. Shout Let's out. do this. That'll be at 3 o'clock at YouTube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee Show. Should be ridiculous. Chris Mad Dog oh, Russo with oh, Mad Dog Unleashed oh, oh, is next. Oh. His show will be much better than ours. We promise you that. We can't thank you enough for spending the last three hours alongside of us. If you missed any part of the show, you can catch up at the podcast, the Pat McAfee Show 2.0. We'll be back tomorrow for a feel-good Friday with a massive, massive yeah. guest list. This has been the Pat McAfee Show. Mad Dog Unleashed oh, is next. Oh, oh. Oh. Okay. All right. Shinigami's coming in like four minutes. Man. Everyone stay calm. I have to piss, though. So we run a commercial, I think. We'll, be, we'll be back in like two, three minutes. Shinigami from Street Beefs. AJ, is that cool with you? Yeah, good to go. <laughs> oh, you have that bottle under the table. Yeah, he's going to be in the No, I'm in, I can run down. All right, hey. Hey. Have you seen the Hocus <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no. You want to go on the other side? I'm about to piss my pants. All right, we're back in like <laughs> two, three minutes. Hopefully there's Velcro. Minutes. What's that? Hopefully there's a Velcro. They look like my grandpa's orthotics. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, oh, oh. Tom Brady fucking wore these. Okay, hit the thing. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, He's saying God. don't go off the top, it's too shallow. All you're gonna hear this stadium do is they put the big paw up, they start shaking it, they go, whoa. Yeah, he loves the defensive side of the ball. He said yesterday to me that this is a blue-collar team. They win it on special teams. They have five block kicks this season. The defensive side of the ball, Lynch leads the Big 12 in sacks. But also on the offensive side, Denzel Mims is an absolute animal. He is a weapon. Charlie Brewer is a quarterback from Blake Travis. His dad was a quarterback in Texas. Yeah. His grandpa was a quarterback in Texas. And the people here in Waco just so happened to get a chance to see Charlie Brewer on a daily basis. Okay. Hey, 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 oh, hey, God. hey, hey, hey. Here is going to mean a little bit different than what it means on the internet currently. And hopefully here in Baylor, they hope they're not hearing a lot of boomer sooner. Everybody wants to be a punter, including quarterbacks. If I was a quarterback, I'd want to be a punter as well. Zero yards on that punt. Zero. That's an embarrassing situation. Zero. The Dak dance that gets on national television has led to a lot uh. of losses, but you got to uh. respect the hips being able uh. to go. Uh. am I going to make for college game day? Well, I want to make something creative. I want to make something fun. No, to hell with it. I don't like OU. <laughs> <laughs> Look how thick that thing is. That's years and years of patience. Right now? Okay, let's do it. We are out here on the Brazos River, which you can take a boat to the game. 
One of the only stadiums in the country that you can do that. It's beautiful out here. A lot of people would say, this is the last time I'm going to be on game day. The last time I allegedly did what I'm about to do, I ended up in a jail cell. Let's go! <laughs> commitment by the way <laughs> all right ready <laughs> welcome back <laughs> what's that AJ I'm ready. I'm just here waiting. I can hear you run in the room. Yeah, we we all the the room has lit up a little bit with the. I have not seen our next guest yet, but he is in the Zoom call, and the boys have seen him, and there is quite a buzz of brewing. Before we get to our next guest, I have to talk about how I learned of our next guest on the internet. I was added to a Street Beefs Twitter account. I go over there. Their pin tweet was the most electric video I had ever seen on the internet. Foxy, please play it. Name's Gito. If you don't know me, you're about to. Shinigami fighting out of Lancaster, California, representing 4360 Martial Arts and the Lab BJJ. Shout out to my girl Rachel. Shout out. Do this. Shout out. Let's do it. Let's do this. Fight. Fight. Remember your training. Remember your training. Oh, miss. Pow! Night, 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 night. So. I obviously went down a little bit of a rabbit hole. <laughs> Turns out this man is an undefeated street beef fighter. Uh, not only is he the most electrifying human I've ever seen on the internet, he is also scheduled to fight the East Coast OG heavyweight street beef Ooh. champion in Big Smile, either this weekend or next weekend. I'm not 100% sure. He was potentially going to join us yesterday, but he had training. Ladies and gentlemen, Shinigami. Yeah! Uh, Shinigami, how are you, man? Where are you? Where are you right now? Just so I can, uh, you know, I'm kind at of feel... home, chilling in my room. Okay, that's your room there. I see some trophies in the back. Uh, the video, the video that that I watched that introduced me to you, is maybe my favorite thing ever. Um, can we? If you could slide to your right just a little bit, a little bit to your right. Nope, the other right. Got it. There we go. Uh, that video, how long have you been fighting? How did you get into the fight game? And do you dress like this all the time? Because that is one of the most electric things I've ever seen in my life. No, no. I just wear this to fight and to do these interviews. Um, <clears throat> uh, and in class sometimes. I actually have a different game for class, actually. But uh, I started training martial arts in 2007 when I just wanted to learn how to defend myself because I used to not know how to fight at all. I used to get routinely beat up as a kid i used to i got in a couple of fights in college and i i didn't lose but i didn't do good either which was a wake-up call because people stopped messing with me once i got kind of bigger um i've been doing karate for 13 years uh 13 and a half almost and i've been doing uh, brazilian jiu-jitsu for nine years off and on um started doing tournaments because they talked to me doing karate tournaments one time i 
didn't originally want to compete. But then I fell in love with that. And then I found out that you could do karate in MMA when I stumbled across um, the Lyoto Machida Sokaju fight on uh, Ultimate UFC where they were replaying them. And um, yeah, man, that that pretty much led me down a rabbit hole of all kinds of different tournaments. Then I found tournaments at a MMA division. And then uh, I found out I've been watching Street Beast since 2010. And I found out they were going to come out to the West Coast and do an event, but I couldn't make those. Uh, my car got stolen and I had an injury oh, anyway. It wouldn't have been a good idea. So close. And then uh, last August, they had a, started a West Coast chapter, and I got in on the first event, like, at that last minute. And, uh, you know, you saw what happened there. I <laughs> uh, got matched with Detail, and uh, he's a grappler, but he didn't really come in with striking training. Uh, we talked afterwards. Cool guy. Um, and yeah, man, I just did what I, I, you know, have trained to do a million times. I've landed that kick so many times in tournaments. It was the first time I got to actually put the power on it though. Hey, it was a beautiful thing. And you know, like Jorge Masvidal, I don't know if you're aware, he was fighting in backyards back in the day. Kimbo Slice, another guy, RIP, who got to the big time. We know Jorge is big time in the UFC right now. Are you trying to get Dana White's attention? Uh, I would love Dana White's attention. I also wouldn't mind, you know, doing some stuff in Bellator, like uh, my karate brother, uh, Raymond Daniels. We're actually from the same karate lineage. Okay, so let's talk about that. Karate, uh, back in the day, Shinigami, and as I was talking about, learning about you, back in the day, if you went out pre-UFC, pre-MMA being a commercialized sport, if you had a friend that knew karate, you were all right. All right, like I got a guy, he breaks woods. He, he he breaks woods, he's got a brown belt. But if we were to potentially get up in a mix up here, uh, we're okay. All right, he's going to come and do the thing. Then as fighting evolved, affliction shirts came. You know, the, the, the cauliflower here continued to grow. Uh, Gracie came over, mm-hmm. Brazilian jiu-jitsu came through. We, you thought karate potentially lost its luster. And I think whenever I saw you, gi, thing, kick, shout out Rachel, by the way, we will talk about Rachel and who that is. Uh, let's do this. You almost, did you save karate? Are you the last karate fighter that the world has? You just said your karate brother there, and then you said you train a little MMA, but is karate almost being uh, CPR'd by Shinigami in Street Beefs at this point? I don't, I don't know if I can take credit for that. I mean, you got Wonder Boy, Lyoto Machida, Raymond Daniels, GSP. They're all karate fighters. Um, and, they're, you know, people kind of don't realize that all of those guys uh, are karate fighters, except for, like, Lyoto Machida and Wonder Boy, because those are the ones who really talk about it. But, um, yeah, I mean, karate never really went away. It just, uh, I mean, I guess I'm kind of – bringing it back to the forefront on, on the internet with the viral video stuff. But I mean, last year, I think it was last year, Raymond Daniels did a tremendously way flashier. He tried to do a tornado roundhouse, uh, like a 720 double spin tornado roundhouse knockout. Ooh. The guy leaned back, he lands. And instead of throwing the kick, he, he throws an overhand right with all that 720 momentum and knocks the dude out cold. I mean, it, it just comes with the lineage, man. We do, we do amazing stuff from, uh, the uh, Kempo Shotokan lineage. Yes, you do. It, so I, I'm, this next fight you have coming up. Big who smile. Is, who, yeah. So who was the opponent? Talk a little bit about what, what their skill set may be and how do you plan on knocking them out? Um, I, know he's a, I know he's a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, I don't know if he has any stripes uh, on his belt. I couldn't really tell from what I saw on the Instagram post. It didn't look like it, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's not as experienced as me, but I'm a, I'm a blue belt with three stripes, almost four, uh, no big deal. which, you know, jiu-jitsu only has five belts. So when you get stripes, it means something, you know, the ranks in jiu-jitsu mean something because there's not really a set curriculum and it's hard to earn. Um, he, he has some, some kind of not so sharp hands. He, I've never seen him throw a kick. I've never seen him really eat a kick, uh, to the leg or anywhere else. Um, so, I mean, he's, he's kind of – he actually fights more like a wrestler, though, than a Jujutero. So, I think um, it's kind of just that that almost that classic matchup, right? Like more Western-style looking fighting, like with the boxing and wrestling kind of style he has versus my more like traditional Eastern martial art with the karate and the, the, the Brazilian jiu-jitsu, like really with the ground game and the gi on and all that. Um, 
it's a, I think it's a good stylistic matchup. I think I have the experience to definitely uh, to win this fight. Um, not going to say how I'm going to set up the kick, if I'm going to set up the kick or what I'm going to do. I don't want to give up yeah. the game plan Smart. since the fight's only a week away. Next week. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, I definitely have been working on uh, a game plan, though. I have one. I've been working on it for three months. As soon as I, as soon as I uh, got back in the gym after fighting the street bender rematch, I started working on on training for Big Smile. How did you? Yeah, I knew it was coming down the pipe. How did you come up with the name Shinigami? How, how did we get the name Shinigami? I, I've looked up the meaning. Uh, I I respect that. And do do people like, for instance, um, you know, Beverly Hills Ninja is one of my favorite. Okay, one of my favorite movies of all time. Okay, so when, whenever you think about that world, did, did you have you had a nickname ever since you started taking trips into the dojo? Is that what you've been called? Do you does Rachel uh, call you Shinigami? Uh, like how when does Shinigami come out? Interviews and fights, or is that all the time now? Is that just a lifestyle? Okay, so so here's the story of, of how I I threw out the name Shinigami in Street Beefs. Uh, Street Beast kind of has this thing where, like, uh, only one fighter can have one nickname at a, at a time. And I don't know if you can see that Grim Reaper poster oh, behind me oh, over there. Oh, yeah. And all the skulls and stuff. I'm actually kind of a – when I'm not doing – wearing this stuff, I'm I'm all gothed out, man. Um, oh, nice. Same with Goth AJ. kid since, like, high school for sure. Nice. Uh, but, like um, – the Reaper was taken. It's on the Wall of Fame. Grim Reaper, I believe, is also on the Wall of Fame in the OG yard. Uh, Red Reaper was taken. I couldn't think of any other variations of the Reaper that were kind of concise that could potentially be on the Wall of Fame or just, you know, were nice and quick to throw out for the intro. So I was like, you know what? I've been studying Japanese since I was a kid on and off. Um, I might as well just use the Japanese equivalent, which is Shinigami, because it sounds cool. It works with the, the whole karate thing. Why not? And it just it 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 worked out. It suits you well. It, it really does suit you well. So I, I, I just you need to. Uh, I know you're an expert at this, so I just I need to to know. So there's there's a legendary actor slash martial artist, old Steve Seagal. I know it's Aikido that he is trained in. Is he legit? Like, what do you think of him? <laughs> what's going on, Shinigami? What, what, what's okay. that face all about? So uh, Joe Rogan actually covered this, but I'm and I'm probably gonna it's probably gonna come out saying exactly the same thing almost he said because it's it's just the facts. So his black belt is legitimate in Aikido, but Aikido was never meant to be a fighting art. It was founded by Uesh, uh, uh -oh. Morihei Ueshiba and uh, Osensi Ueshiba um, designed it to be a means of physical, emotional, and spiritual development. It was never meant to be practical. He said as much. One of his philosophies is if you hurt your opponent, you hurt yourself. So the whole thing is it's a bunch of uh, techniques that you do on a compliant opponent, attacking in ways that you'll never see in the real world. And, I mean... You hate him. Yeah, cool, you're a seventh-degree black belt in Aikido. It's like being a seventh-degree black belt in um, ballroom dance, you know? It's <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you're, you're not you're not fighting anybody and winning with Aikido unless you have altered it into something that's never going to look like Aikido. You, there's there's uh, actually an entire style of Aikido called a real world Aikido, and it starts to look more like uh, you know your your self defense tape kind of stuff where you're you're seeing guys throwing people in the chairs, hitting them with stuff. There's not. You know, you only learn how to throw a straight punch in Aikido so that, the, up, you, you know, up. the other guy can grab it and throw you with it. You know, I mean, some of the stuff is mechanically correct, but the way they practice it, the way they apply it isn't realistic enough for it to ever be practical the way it's taught. And if you evolve it out of that, it doesn't look like Aikido anymore. There's actually uh, an entire separate branch, too, that, that does tournaments. It's competition Aikido, and it just looks like sloppy judo. Like, mm, it's it's... Yeah. It's not – so Steven Seagal, for all of his, you know, I taught Anderson Silva how to front kick. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> um, so you hate – so th there seems to be a nice little uh, hatred from the actual mixed martial arts world, potentially for the Steven Seagal mixed martial arts world, which sounds much different than the world you guys are in. I, look, can we – before – I mean, I'm cool with burying Steven Seagal. I, I think it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, for, to learn about that. But I would like to learn about street beefs, though. 
you said you've been a fan since 2010 or something like that, and you weren't able to get to the event that they had. I'm just now learning about this. This is, has this been like a, a, an underground internet fighting base? And how did you learn about it? How often do they fight? Are they originally in East Coast? Because you said they came out to the West Coast. Where did it start at? How did this whole thing come about? Because in my eyes, as soon as I saw you, I was like, is there more of this? And there is. There's yeah. a lot more. There's a lot There's in Street Beefs. There's there's a 12 year rabbit hole of videos if you really want to dive oh, down. Oh yeah. It. Um, it it started in 2008. I didn't find out about it until 2010. And the reason I found out about it in 2010 was thanks to YouTube's little algorithm. So I'm always looking for <laughs> videos about other martial arts, even if I don't train them, because you never know what you're gonna find in the real world. It's always a good idea to avoid fighting in the street in the in the actual street because mm -hmm. you don't know who what anybody knows. Um, can't Definitely. judge a book by its cover, any of that. And so I was Definitely. always looking up not just like street fights videos because I, I would look those up too because street fighting evolves every year. That was actually Ed Kemp, uh, Parker's thing, the founder of American Kempo. Ed Parker's thing was he was a prolific street fighter and he took the Kempo that he learned and adapted it to what was really going on in, in the 50s when he was street fighting and designed it to continually evolve with how street fighting is going in, in the real world so it's always practical. Um, so I was looking up all that stuff and then some street beast fights started coming up in my in my recommended videos and I started watching them. Um, I remember, I think one of the first fights I saw was like striking Viking versus somebody. And that dude has a, a nuke <laughs> in his right hand. And uh, I watched that and I was like, man, I wish I could get over there to Virginia where this is so I could fight him. Cause he looks dangerous, but I think I could possibly beat him. I just got to avoid that right hand. Right. <clears throat> so I just, I watched off and on for years, just watching and watching and watching. And one day Scarface announced that he was coming to the West coast to do an event in Cali. So I joined the Facebook group and everything to, to try to sign up for it. And then um, I, di I didn't get to make it. Uh, and then I did another one two months later in Vegas. Didn't get to make that one either. But then the guy that hosted it in Vegas and fought in the first one in Cali, um, he, he offered him to run this a West Coast branch. Because not everybody can make it to Virginia, especially not people who just want to compete instead of just going there to settle beef. Because it, it's primarily to settle, you know, hood disputes without gun violence, which is something that, I'm, I'm very supportive of, you know, we got too much gun violence. And while I'm a firm believer in the Second Amendment, I also feel like it's kind of stupid to pull out a gun and pop somebody over something really stupid, like they owe you 20 bucks or they DM'd your girl. Like, dude, put on some gloves, come to the yard, punch each other in the face, and leave it there. That's street beefs. You know? They're right in the middle of the street hate. beefs. All right, good, AJ, go ahead. And you're cleaning everybody up for us. Hey, we appreciate the good work you're doing. I have to ask you about a sign in the background. Does that say zombies must be kept on a leash? What exactly does yes. that mean? And how do you how do you follow that? Uh, you know what? Like I said, just a goth kid. I sometimes come across cool stuff like that when they're doing the clearance sale after Halloween. So I just grab stuff when I when I see it. I'm a huge, huge George Romero fan. So I have like all yeah. the George Romero zombie movies and all the yeah. remakes of them too. So I, ha I saw keep the zombies on the leash, man. And the, the sign next to it says uh, zombie hunting permit, something like that. Hey, were you going to go do the uh, Area 51 thing? Oh, nah, man. <laughs> nah. I knew that wasn't going to turn into anything, man. If I thought for a second it would have been serious, yeah, I would have been down to raid Area 51, man. <laughs> I want to let, you know, yeah. let you know that Shinigami, in my eyes, probably a guy that would have done the Area 51 raid. I like the fact that you had a little common sense. Can we talk about all these trophies? He's going to go to a full screen. I'd like to voice it. The, the trophies there, there are a plenty. Is that all from just karate kicking the shit out of people? Is that what's going on there, Shinigami? Oh! Wow. Hey! Metal. Hey! People come around and play a little games with Shinigami, don't even know this guy's got medals and trophies on deck. That's from karate competitions? Karate, jiu-jitsu, uh, sport yeah. MMA, which is like competitive MMA sparring. Shinigami, I'm gonna get right to it here, okay? I actually have a belt too, but it's in the living room. I should have brought it in here. Damn. Uh, that's right. Hey, Rachel, you know, she's doing what she's gotta do. The, um, shout out. Whenever, shout out Rachel, by the way. The, are we still <laughs> shouting out Rachel, by the way, or no? Yo, yeah. Shout out Rachel, dude. Hey, shout, shout out, out Rachel. Out. Shout, out Rachel. Shout, out. shout out Rachel and the excellent eggplant parmesan she made me for dinner last night. Yeah. Hey, let's do this. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about Rachel's cooking abilities because the reason why the video is so sensational is because the way you look, nobody thought in the history of the world that you'd be able to bring a 
towering left up to somebody's head with the way, are you trying to break the stereotype that you can be a big body and still be able to play in this incredible cardio game, which is fighting, uh, conditioning game, which is fighting. And also everybody thinks you gotta be like super flexible. I'd assume you're super flexible, but your build I think is immediately what people watch and go like, oh, that's me. And that, that, that's like a, a guy that's- I mean, like I, I didn't come in trying to break any stereotypes, man. I just put on some weight during, uh, some weight during the beginning of the lockdown and, uh, last year man I actually i actually put on like 40 pounds something like that um after rona hit and everything shut down for what was supposed to be two weeks and then two months and then three months and then four months and then you know stress eating and stuff because without martial arts dude i just go dude i, I get so like stressed out and like are you gonna stay uh, here are you gonna stay at the heavier weight because i mean obviously it worked you... i mean i've i've been losing weight I've, I've actually lost like 40 pounds again yeah um, okay i mean I'm, I'm always gonna be a heavyweight but i'm not gonna be like heavyweight i'm uh trying to get down to 250 again that was uh probably the best competition weight i was ever at i was a beast fast strong heavy you know everything you need for for mma to to really win in a in a cage fight especially on the ground so um yeah man that whole thing was that was that was four or five months of uh you know eating too many carbs again man um and I, just coming in and uh i thought that was yeah, always... man, i just did my thing I'm, i am super flexible and you know what a lot of people don't uh realize is yeah sometimes you see some overweight black belts in uh the karate community and stuff that every single one of us was once in good shape and learned all of our flexibility and all that and still probably practice it because I stretch every day. Um, there was a, an Instagram, like Crime World or something like that, that posted it and the dude did a, a commentary on it and was like, Shinigami doesn't miss stretches or breakfast. And he's absolutely right. I don't <laughs> miss stretches I stretch every day, every single day, once if not twice. I, it's, yeah, I got to be able to get them kicks up there, man. It's, it's the best way to knock somebody out, and nobody sees it coming. I can't wait to see you at 250 again. Yeah. Let's get down. I can't wait to see it. Connor, what do you have? Yeah, Shinigami, I noticed that you were in a hay ring for that last fight, but a lot of big smiles fights are in uh, cages. What type of ring is that going to be in? And also, does that change your training in any way? Um, it's going to be in the in the cage. It's going to be in the, uh, the OG yard that they have over there. They actually bought a dedicated piece of property a couple of years ago so that cage is a permanent fixture over there um the west coast branch kind of moves around locations so that you know people can because the west coast is huge california is huge it's, it's one of the largest states in the country mm -hmm. like land wise so people live all over the place so they, they go back and forth between california arizona vegas um they're supposed to be going to norcal um so that changes you know what you're going to do how you're going to fight um the last one there was supposed to be a cage but there wasn't enough people to help set it up so it didn't get set up so some of the fighters were concerned that there was uh you know no barrier so they brought in hay bales but it wasn't like if you notice the first one it was two levels high which was fine that last one that i did the the single level was kind of a problem because i kept tripping over it <laughs> uh, if you notice the only time i really had any i ended up in any kind of trouble was tripping over the hay bales I mean, I should have been circling around more, but yeah, I mean, because I was expecting cage work like the last, the the Vegas fight, you know. So, I I kind of don't trip too much about having my back to the cage because I know I'm not going to get taken down from there. My my defense is too good. Um, so that's why I was kind of moving back more than laterally when I should have been moving more laterally. Plus, when you I was in there, it felt smaller than it actually was. So I I was like, man, I'm going to get cut off no matter where I am. So. Yeah, the, it definitely changes how you're going to fight, how you're going to fight back, and what you have to worry about environment-wise. But um, I think, you know, most of the places coming up are going to have a cage, even on the West Coast. Um, you know, we're trying to get places that are set up for that, where it's going to be, we're going to have a permanent spot in Arizona, one in Vegas, one in Cal, SoCal, probably one in NorCal. And that'll be the, the rub where we're, we're all, we're all going to have cages. Um, let I me mean, know if you guys need. Kinda... Hey, let me know if you guys need investors. I mean, this seems yeah. like something that it would be hilarious to think about. Last question. Uh, we can't thank you enough for your time. I know you're in the middle of training yesterday. I assume you got some stuff going on today as well. Uh, man, it's just my day off, dude. I'm just chilling. I got like one other interview today, and other than that, I'm probably going to be asleep the rest of the day. Man, I train super hard. And I'm exhausted. Oh, yeah. Let's go. That's yeah. what's going on. Yeah. Hey. 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 Little press tour for Shinigami here. The um. 
So whenever you threw that first kick at old buddy in the fight that we saw, the one that we watched there or whatever, um, when you threw that first kick, it was low, it missed. I heard there was a little heckle that came from the back that was almost like, uh, not with the kicks. And then somebody else said, remember your training. Okay, so a couple quick things here. Did you hear... Did you think that they were going to potentially not like the fact that you were coming in with the kicks? They were thinking it was just going to be a throw. And then the remember your training line, who was that? It Was that for you or for him? Um, that was Kilo. That was uh, another Street Beast fighter. I didn't have a corner per se. Um, you can see my daughter behind me in the video. Um, I, I took her because Rachel was actually in the hospital that day. It's, that's why I shouted her out that first fight Shout specifically. Um, so... I took my daughter down there to take her mind off of it. Um, she was worried about her mom and um, figured I shouldn't leave her alone, but I had to go do this thing, man. I had to, I had, couldn't miss it. So I took her with me and then Kilo was, I didn't have a corner. So he, he volunteered to corner for me, but he doesn't, he's not a karate fighter. He doesn't know anything about karate. So his best advice was remember your training, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I did. And man, people were heckling me. I didn't even hear it though. Cause I was too focused on the fight, but watching the video afterwards, I, everyone was heckling me get him ryu da -da 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 -dukin, all that stuff right Whoa. and then as soon as you, as soon as i hit the dude with the shin to the face man like the first one was a, a low kick to see what he would do kind of close the range you know test the waters and as soon as he blocked with his hands i knew i could set up the head kick because i knew that I was, he was going to try to block with his hands again so i fake low kicked high and that's all she wrote right and the next thing you know all those hecklers are ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. for me and then as soon when I fought Storm Rider later the same day, all those same people that were heckling me before was like, "Yeah, Shinigami, get him!" <laughs> da 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 da. How many it's fights wild. in a day? It's been a wild ride, man. It's been a wild ride from hecklers to fans. Now here I am, here, man. It's just insane. Well, now your idols are your rivals. Big Smile, OG heavyweight champion Shinigami will be fighting him next week in Virginia or California. Virginia. In Virginia. How can we watch it? Will it be pay-per-view? What is it? Uh, they live stream it on the Demon Boys Boxing Channel. Um, I don't know what time it's going to start per se. I'll send you I'll send you the info as soon as I find out, you know. Um, but, yeah, they the, the main yard events, they always stream those on Demon Boys Boxing Channel on YouTube. On All right. Uh, hey, let's go. Come on. Hey, let's go. go. Three Woo. months. Woo. You've been training Hush. three months. Shit. Oh. oh. <laughs> right? That's what you do there? Yeah. Pretty much. Close enough. Ohio, by the way. I know a little Japanese as well. Ohio. Ohio. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, Shinigami. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Fucking He's awesome. Shinigami, dude. What Easy is your win. problem? What is your problem? What? I don't have a problem. I just hope, I, like, I got worried for him. I hope he, they all passed their COVID test before the fight. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? Do you not have the Demon Boys channel, AJ? Is that the issue? Up. I just subscribed to it. I can't wait to watch it. I did it. not expect him to say the Demon Boys. I did not expect that by that. That's what got me. That did get me a little bit. Uh, by the way, I can't wait to check it out. I'm so pumped. I'm pumped. Uh, man, I'm so happy I, I found that on the internet. I, I You got to... Just think about me experiencing that for the first time. Now, we all kind of know me at this point. Think of me experiencing that for the first time and then being like, oh, wow, there's probably a treasure trove here. And then <laughs> yeah. just going right in there. It is. <laughs> They're all shit talking him, by the way. And oh, oh, he blocked with his hand. Well, he's done. Bang. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hey, how old is he? Do we have any idea how old he is? I'm on it. We don't ask those questions to Shinigami. Yeah, I almost did. I was very close. I was very close. I, for, but honestly, for real though, I didn't know he had a kid. I'm glad he didn't. It, it would suck to get knocked out in front of your, your daughter. And I saw his daughter was there over his shoulder, right? So she has to be pretty proud. Shinigami's not getting knocked out, AJ. Bro, 13 no. years karate, nine years jujitsu. He's a blue belt with four stripes. 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 Which means he's almost at the next one, right? Yeah. It's like. Uh, and he lives in one of the biggest states in America. Uh, Land wise. 5,000 medals. Yeah. Bro, this dude. Awesome. And by awesome. the way, I felt bad asking. I thought like him being the big guy was a part of the thing. You know yeah. what I mean? He's like, nah, quarantine just got me like everybody else. I'm like, I relatable, relatable. Everything you just said, very, very relatable, sir.
Go ahead. He's dropped down, though. He's lost 40. He's down 40. Yeah. Say, he's trying to get down 250. This one, I was a beast flying around. Big Smile, though, is in for it. I don't think Big Smile even knows. We he's watched some guy. Big Smile fights. We watched some Big Smile fights, and I did watch some more Shinigami fights, and he's been taking into the deep end a little bit, Shinigami, and yeah. he's handled himself pretty well. I mean, I, that's a big-time fight next weekend on Demon Boys podcast. <laughs> big Smile <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Their, their channel, right? With their YouTube Twitch channel. stream or their YouTube channel? Demon Boys. It's pretty sweet. I just looked at it. Yeah, you're fucking, their name's the goddamn Demon Boys. They got 10,000 subscribers. Let's go. Let's go. How Come do I get, how do we get tickets? I want to go. I want to see Can't, this in person. Can't, dude. COVID. COVID protocol, dude. You think Shinigami's letting you around him with that fucking Ohio sniffer? You've been just inhaling COVID <laughs> yeah, all over right. the place? Just getting the ring. Good if you point. want to be there, Good get point. in the ring, AJ. I'll tell you what. You will watch a couple of those and you'll be like, that person should not have gotten in there yeah. while you watch. You know what I mean? You'll do a lot of those. But I love that people are willing to go fight on camera. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that is a nothing but respect to anybody that gets in there and is willing to fight in front of other people because you're obviously putting yourself out there to potentially get got, which could happen oh, to yeah. anybody at any time. What's that, Diggs? Um, during the Shinigami interview, um, there was some breaking news. Not as big as Shinigami, but breaking news. Um, oh. I don't know if you wonder or not. Yeah. Texans court. This is from Dan Maziano. Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson met with new Texans head coach David Culley last Friday. Coach Dave. Yep. In that meeting, Watson reiterated that he wants to be traded and told Culley he has no intention of playing for the Texans again. No change from Watson's end. Was that a Zoom call or FaceTime? Did they say or did they say to meet in person? Uh, does not say. Because I love that Deshaun Watson looked at the guy. Cool. You're probably a good guy. I ain't playing here. Nope. Yeah. All right. Get you, me out. You yeah. don't know what you're getting into here, Coach Dave. <laughs> hey, Coach Dave, I, listen, they're already spreading rumors that Josh McCown is going to take your job in like two years. I mean, this place is a dumpster fire. I appreciate you. I would assume that, you know, you would have uh, been a great head coach to play for, but I ain't fucking doing it, pal. Uh, you, you need to go tell Jack Eastbury, maybe send up different prayers to a different God because mm -hmm. it ain't hitting me, pal. I am out of here. That's an interesting thing to hear Deshaun say to a guy who I think everybody enjoys. I, I don't. I think a lot of people came out and said they liked David Culley or whatever, and just being like, hey, I appreciate you, but come on, get me out of here. It, it sounds like it doesn't, like he probably told him, hey, this has nothing to do with you. It's not personal against you. I was I was long gone before you ever got hired here. That's probably what Deshaun told him. Hey, sir, you're awesome. All right, I, I like you a lot. Old, wouldn't have expected to be this old of a head coach, you know, but I guess Josh McCown, who's in the quarterback room last year, is going to be the head coach or whatever, but uh, I just want to let you know that you're going to hate this place too. Probably after uh, maybe a month or two, maybe a year. Once you see what you got into here, you're going to hate this too. We'll have a conversation then. Let's let's schedule a meeting one year from now, you and me. Let's see how they say. What if that's what Deshaun said? Well, that would be awesome if uh, Coach Dave walks out of there and just goes, I tried, man. He's, he is not coming back here. I wonder if Cesario is probably next then, huh? Yeah, most likely. But do you think Coach Dave, would he be – like did he get – extra nervous after talking to Deshaun if Deshaun did like make a few hints like that he's like hey I know you just got here but I'm just telling you <laughs> give me a text in like three to six weeks you'll know like, you'll get if, it. if I was the head coach I'd be like should I have taken this gig Wait, what coach Dave going to Easterby what the fuck did you guys do <laughs> sorry sorry what in the lord's name did you guys do here what have that guy told me no chance he's playing here so now Deshaun Watson demanded a trade pre Cesario and David Colley. Now, post meeting David Colley, still feel the same exact way. Will Cesario be able to work a little Italian magic? Mm. Maybe get a deal done to keep Deshaun happy in Houston? These are things we're going to have to ask going forward. It doesn't seem like it. You know, Coley should get a Twitter and just, you know, maybe read through everything, Watson's tweets, Randall Cobb's tweets, and maybe he'd kind of learn, oh, shit, I walked into a burning building. Even go back maybe to the story of J.J. Watt uh, in the team fighting. Uh, yeah. Uh, like, the, do, just look back to all of that stuff. It, they got, hey, you got a tough job ahead of you there, Coach Dave. Good luck. Um, A.J., Shinigami was a great way to wrap this thing up, Amazing. huh? With some breaking news. I mean, what a day here. Yes. He, I mean, I'm so intrigued by the guy. Like, everything about him. Everything. From the decoration in his room, just 
to the yeah what he wears for interviews yeah, he's awesome man he is all in I, I appreciate the passion he has for what he does maybe in bellator he said and I, I love dana okay big fan but maybe over in bellator if they you want to give the shinigami a call i could bring the shinigami effect potentially to he's bellator mma or whatever i only wear the gi and the headband for the fights in the interviews i got one more and i'm gonna sleep all day rachel shout out for the eggplant shout parmesan out. i got last Oof. night shinigami is all in okay he's over there in his <laughs> yeah. goth dojo all in. I hope Shinigami holds a belt at some point. I hope he gets a title at some point. I want a Shinigami uh, um, victory speech after winning a title and being at the top oh, of the come, top come of the mountain somewhere. Better come out with some merch. I mean, I need a Shinigami shirt. He How does. about a gi? He oh, does have merch. Can I get a gi? Uh, I was looking through the uh, the gi sold out, but the sweaters and shirts are in stock. How about the headband? I'll have to go check again for that. Wait, there is he selling these things? I hope. They oh, should yeah. Be. oh yeah. Okay, good. Shinigami.com or yeah, can we get? Like, how about him? Find how about when I asked him if he's saving karate all by himself, and he listed off five fighters that I have heard of that are karate fighters? I'm like, this seems like a rugby Aussie rules football issue. You know mm. what I mean? Because jujitsu is getting the credit for everything. Yeah. Jujitsu, judo, getting, they're getting credit for everything. Karate kind of got put on the back burner. He's like George Saint Pierre. He's a karate guy. I was like. Pfft. Would not have known that. Wow. I had no idea. I mean, it makes sense now that I think about it, but they, maybe karate needs a little better PR, and there's no better PR for karate than Shinigami for sure. By the way, when AJ asked him about, um, who was it? Not Van Dam, other guy. Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal. He nailed that sensei's name, by the way, when I looked it up. Yeah. It was spot on. Yeah, that's what Joe he Rogan knew said. right away. He nailed all of them. Like he, the sensei for Seagal, he knew exactly what his name was. Oh, yeah. Time. As soon as he said them to you, you saw he was thinking that we potentially knew the answer. That was interesting. That was one of the most baffling parts of the entire interview whenever he was mentioning that person that trained Seagal, and he was like halfway through the name, and it's all, it felt like he thought we were going to finish it for him. There was no chance of that happening. Now, if you want to talk Bitcoin, I do know that no, uh, no, uh, na, na, uh, the Japanese man started yeah. that whole thing. Naruto? Naruto's the runner, right, for Area 51? Yeah. Uh, That's how you run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? Show me. Aerodynamic. Yeah, yeah you, you put your hands up. Remember, they were going to storm mm -hmm. Area 51, and they were going to run like oh, this. Oh, yeah. yeah. They were going to like, shoot us in the face and the chest, please. <laughs> Not in the arms, but this makes you run faster. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wait, do, you, do you pump them? <laughs> I, I don't know. Probably not. I would assume like perfect form <laughs> is to just be a squirrel suit wearer, or just have that thing locked down. Think you Shoulders. Them. Yeah, I think you pump them before you start <laughs> running. So it's kind of like a power up situation. Well, I'm with these Hoka One Ones on. Woo! I learned that these shoes are Hawaiian. Great. Love Hawaii. Love these. <laughs> look, how, look at that Seacrest sole you have on there. <laughs> what did you call you? What? what did you, why did Ryan Seacrest just take a massive two? <laughs> Ryan Seacrest, he wears heels that are like six inches tall on his shoes. Listen, Tom Brady wore, uh, wore these. AQ Shipley, Super Bowl champion, he wore these. Yeah. Okay. They're good for you. I'm wearing them. Those are for like triathlon people, people no. that do Ironman. No, I have the Iron Man ones, actually. <laughs> These are the walkers, pal. These are the cocaine. I can tell. I can tell. Those are the Hoka. <laughs> put them Coca. up there. For real. Will you put them up there? I just want to see. I mean, you remember the last time I started fucking around with these Hokas, the goddamn thing got shattered. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? It sounded like Stone Cold was about to come through. <laughs> what? Wow. I mean, you got nine inches of foam from the, the bottom <laughs> of your You ever walk on clouds, AJ? Walking on sunshine. Oh. <laughs> wow. Don't come don't come from that angle. <laughs> like Easterby, can you can you see walk like Easterby in those? Oh yeah, I can chat them. Oh, you know what I mean? I can, I can, oh, oh. I mean it is tough because it does feel like you're gonna fall off the back of this. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Wait, but you can I, see why the are you wearing that you have there. You know what I mean? Bro, look at this. You a bubble? What? Right, ready? <laughs> this is where we are. Okay, you ready? And then we go. <laughs> it's a full. I mean, it is really. Step down. It is a full. Yeah, pretty good. Did, did someone send you these? Oh, I bought them. They're expensive. I know. I know people that wear them that are like are ultra runners or whatever. They do like run 60 miles at a time. Once again, those are a different pair. I will be wearing those tomorrow. Come on, AJ. <laughs> What's different? They got they have 14 inches of foam. 
Actually, less foam, I think, so you can run. Yeah. You know, <laughs> spill for speed. Because <laughs> you gotta, you, you know what I mean? Because you don't have to you balance yourself from falling off. Hey, I know there's not much space, and I'm not trying to get you to do stupid things, but is there any way you could at least give us like a five yard burst like that? I just oh, don't know how oh, you could actually no. move. No, I can't. Especially today, we already yeah, fucking. Yeah. Ban it, ban it, ban it. Oh, you broke that? Your case? Yeah, she's done class everywhere. Done it. See, I had this hockey stick and everything around. I didn't break anything. Well, okay, you broke my computer, but. <laughs> oh, really? The one you've been using? Can't use it anymore. I can't. It just stays on the same thing. Yeah. Then why do you keep it open? Because it stays on the same thing. What are you talking about? Okay. For All appearance right. as well. Yeah, we're sponsored. Steve Jobs gave us a call. You also screwed up yeah, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> uh, the hammer RP. holder, too. What's yeah. going on, Foxy? You got a piss? No. <laughs> I just gotta stand. It's getting a little antsy back here. Foxy's yeah. starting oh. to. Oh, is this is this turning into a? Are we doing something here? What? I mean, we can wait. Can't we? I mean, we <laughs> no, can wait. wait I don't have What's... to pee. I just gotta stand. What's going on? All right, let's get out of here. <laughs> shout out to Shinigami. Shout, shout, out. Out. shout out to Shinigami. Legit. I don't think I've ever heard a better shout out on this show yet. Maybe to Willie, over there by Marshawn Lynch. Oh yeah. Yeah. Man. Shout out Shinigami. So do you think, though, he was going to nap the rest of the day? Does he keep the gi and headband yes. off? No, no. He said he only wears it for, remember, he said he only wears it for fighting and for interviews. Yeah. Other than that, you're going to see him in all black mm -hmm. off that. Jankos, right. probably. I think his next interview is with today. Probably. Jim Rome. Ariel. Hawaii. Rogan. Maybe Hawaii. Let me call Ariel. <laughs> hey, you know Dude, what if he's talking to shit? What if he answers it? Oh. Shinigami is sitting on his fucking computer. He should be so lucky. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I tell you. Come on. Bro. I want What's he doing? He on double M? He's not on air because. Oh, wow. all right, dude. We get it, dude. My wife asked me, uh, my wife said that that was maybe our best interview we've ever done. Most professional we have ever acted during an interview, she said. Tell her, thank you very much. I, I felt like it was great. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Demon Boys Network got me. Like, I couldn't <laughs> I did not expect that. I thought pay per view, maybe we're going to do like YouTube streamer on Street Beefs because they have a massive YouTube. Yeah, why well, wanted they do that? I was like, but no, he said, but he, it's how he said it. Like, well, yeah, you guys know the Demon Boys Network. That's where, yeah, of course, that's where it is. I'm doing this one more time. Wow, well, Ariel. Is it in Canada right now? <laughs> he, does, he doesn't live in Canada. He does not. <laughs> we are live. I'm live. I'm live. I'm just doing an interview now. Can I call you back? Hold on. I'm live. I'm Shinigami. live. I'm live. Hold on. Can you please say something? Do you know who Shinigami is? Shinigami? Yeah. Can you give me a hint? Do your research wow. after this interview. I appreciate you answering. You need to have Shinigami on your show. Is he a, a, an MMA fighter? Yeah. He's a karate kid, okay? You need to do a little bit of research. He has a title fight next weekend. The fact that he's a recommendation from you makes me never want to learn about him. <laughs> Whoa, come on. Come on. How, oh. Did I just hurt Shinigami's Shinigami career? Shinigami did not. No, he's going to he's gonna look him up and he'll be like, wow, yeah. Pat was right. Dana White's going to love him now. By the way, yeah. full suit, ear thing. <laughs> just <wrote. laughs> was, yep. He's basically going to be in the UFC two weeks right after <laughs> Big Smile. might sign the biggest deal. He had full ear thing. I mean, light was on. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> You have to pause his interview? Yeah, he's probably, there's somebody probably Oh, it's probably with sitting. a 14-year-old again. Well, he said, no, he said, I'm in the middle of it. Like, what? what? I'm, I'm in the middle. He did a 14-year-old's podcast because he got bamboozled. Yeah. The guy made him think that yeah. the 14-year-old kid basically found his number, called him, and then just put, made him come on the show. The kid, great booker, that kid. Yeah. And potentially, that kid's going to have a, a really good future uh -huh. in the booking industry, actually. Very persistent, but we need Shinigami with Ariel Hawani. We need it. Or how do you think Mark Madden feels about Shinigami? Loves him. Yeah. Uh, Loves him. Might drive to Virginia and be his cornerman. Yeah. <laughs> Why isn't Mark his cornerman? Oh. oh. <laughs>
Some trust, of trust your training. Remember your training. <laughs> <laughs> Why is our good friend Joe Hadley not in street beefs? Oh, well, we want people to die. Man, imagine him with a cigarette right before that thing oh, starts. Man. While he's getting intro. <laughs> Haddlebags. <laughs> <laughs> I think he keeps it in the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's some good fighters in there. There are some bad ones, but there are some good fighters in there. Oh, yeah. Legit. <laughs> what are the are there any rules? One minute rounds. Uh, now he's he has a championship fight coming up, so it might be five rounds or whatever. I think his first fight we saw was supposed to be a three round fight. Yeah. It ended obviously quickly, and then oh. I saw some other videos. Uh, people, but. We're sending me clips of Shinigami after, obviously, I talk. there's a couple other fights where he made it into, I think, the second or third round. They were all obviously very tired, and he still ended the guy or whatever Shinigami yeah. did. But, yeah, they're one minute round, so you're in there just, I assume the, the goal is for you just to throw bombs the yeah. entire time. What if Shinigami is, like, 60 years old? He's been doing this for 40 years, and now this is his final. This is like he's finally getting the break. And because he's trained so hard, that's why he looks so young and so good, and he's really entering his prime right now. Yeah, and that's why he's so tired, too. Like, yeah. People forget I'm training all day. I'm a 60-year-old. I need to sleep a little bit. Tom Brady and karate. Shout out shout out to the eggplant partnership. Oh, eggplant farm last night. Right. He stretches twice a day, too, by the way. Mm -hmm. Hey, I need to start doing yeah, that, actually. Yeah, he does miss two things. Breakfast. Breakfast. Stretching. Stretching. Hell yeah. What do you think Shinigami has for breakfast now? Now we're diving in this little bacon, egg, and cheese croissant sandwich. Maybe some uh, sausage links. Oh, tater tots on the side there. Was eight eggs. Probably. I had a French toast delivered from Perkins last night for oh. dinner. Whoa. <laughs> How so good. Wild move. Are you serious? Oh, so good. <laughs> Nothing so like good. breakfast for dinner. Oh, it was so good. The eggs. I had cheese, eggs, scrambled eggs, cheese, uh, bacon, sausage patty, French oh, toast. I'm like that tonight. From well, Perkins? From Perkins, yeah. They oh, second dinner? They Is showed up. Because, I think it's because how we, we ended the show about Shoney's and the used tampon. So you were thinking breakfast for dinner. Oh, Come on. You never Again. failed to deliver, Again. do you, AJ? I just know how your brain works. And I think, although you would not admit it, at some point you're like, man, what was that a Shoney's he talked about that tampon? Hey, babe, let's get some Perkins for dinner. Now, I, hey, listen, have I will say... <laughs> I did not even I did not think about Shoney's <laughs> or your tampon talk while choosing. Uh, the wife was very excited actually for the Perkins. Uh, Perkins showed up on the DoorDash. It was a brand new thing, so it was uh, quite a moment for us. And I had a spicy chick two days ago, Ooh, spicy oh, chicken yeah. sandwich that had me up at three fifteen a.m. for like an hour and a half, and then it continued through the whole day. So I was thinking the opposite of a spicy chicken. Went with French toast. Oh, That's yeah. what I went with the French toast. So I didn't, you know. Have, what's going on back here? What's going on? Bill and Nick are getting kind of getting into it. Bill's yeah. still very upset about what you guys said about Naruto. So he came over here and started messing with the light. <laughs> what? Bill loves Naruto. Yeah. He's... Naruto's the running style, right, Bill? Bill. Oh, there you go. Bill Naruto. Over Bill Naruto is the running style. Uh, that is the Naruto run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. What did we do bad that made you made you Show get us. upset? I thought it, we it respected wasn't bad. him. It was a Nick's light back here died, and he you know he just he doesn't do enough for himself for the show to turn it back on. So wow. I want to do it for him. Oh, so you're looking out for the show. It had nothing to do with Naruto. The show and Nick both, you know, are my good friend Nick. I think they're also pissed back there because their fake GIF highlight cards uh, were supposed to drop today, and they keep getting pushed back because they're shot, fake and nothing happens. Top all. Shot is in a hot seat right now with the fans. Oh, oh, I oh. just got one. Let's not. We, we can't. Oh, I sold yesterday. What did? <laughs> I sold my card yesterday. You didn't hold the line? Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Is it down again? There's supposed to be a drop, and it just keeps getting postponed and postponed. I think they're getting rid of the bots. That's why they're doing that. I, uh, I have heard that people with bots have been kicked out of the Top Shot world forever, permanently. Good. The NFGs are dead. What's that? Non-fudgeable. NFT. NFTs. <laughs> That's uh, no fucking good, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. It's a good point. All right. Before the show gets any worse... <laughs> Let's get out of here. <laughs> Shout out to the 23,000 people still watching. Okay, that's like an arena. Love you. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Arena soccer stadium in America, not over there. Mm -hmm. um, can't thank you enough. We'll see you tomorrow with a big show tomorrow. Thanks for not trying to get too toxic there, AJ. You really did well. See you later, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. You're the best. <laughs> Bye.
You want to do intro outro real quick?